What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past. Actually, forget everything. Right now, I'm full of turkey, and too much turkey is bad for the ass. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and today I'm joined by my awesome Revolver co-host, Briar Rabbit. Man, how you feeling after all this turkey? I'm feeling really good, man. I've been eating like turkey leftovers, like Thanksgiving leftovers, like three meals a day for the last three days. I feel like a goddamn freight train. I weigh as much as one anyway. <laughs> so, so do I, man. It's it's been it's been a, a hell of a Thanksgiving, man. Lots and lots of cooking. I'm anxious to see what's going on out there in the UK. What do you guys do during the American Thanksgiving season, Gary Diaz? Uh, we're thankful that we uh, expedited our sort of pagan colonists that left to form. 13 colonies on new lands and uh, pillage the indigenous locals for so all of their natural riches. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> well, we didn't forget the Boston Tea Party, man. That oh, shit stings. Shit. It's just like yesterday. Just like yesterday. And, of course, my homeboy, Willie Wilson. How you doing this week, my friend? Doing good, man. Thanksgiving was awesome. It was like a bunch of, like, deluxe Lunchables. There was so <laughs> much of it. Like, and... There's so many more. I can make my own Lunchable now. I can, like, pack up and individualize what I want in there. It's great. Leftovers are awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, un unfortunately for me, or I guess fortunately, depending on how you look at it, uh, I got a turkey breast that's stalling in the refrigerator for it to be cooked. I got turkey leftovers from a 23-pound turkey that I cooked for Thanksgiving. Damn. And I sharpened all my knives, and somehow it seemed like it made more turkey because I was able to slice it so perfectly. So people were able to go get four, five, six slices. I had a cousin show up. He he called me on Thanksgiving morning and said, hey, man, happy, happy Thanksgiving. And he lives in a different state. And I said, hey, Brandon, my cousin Brandon. And uh, he said, hey, can I stop by and, and stay for the weekend, eat five or six plates? <laughs> Yo, I mean, he didn't mention just... that five or six plate thing before he, he said yes. Well, he just knew I, he knew I wouldn't turn his greedy ass down. He did <laughs> he did the same thing last year when I was living in an apartment. And the next question was, I heard you got a house. <laughs> so yeah, he showed up, ate all my food, and uh, man, it's been it's been a a hell of an experience this year. I had something special uh, before Thanksgiving last week. You know, it was a prelude to things to come. I uh, you guys saw what I ate. I went out and I hunted, and I shot a squirrel and I shared it on Twitter. <laughs> And I, I killed ate, an eight. You not only ate a squirrel, but you fed it to your fucking children. Yes. <laughs> Daddy brought home the bacon no, that night. It's yeah, literally in the form no of a bullshit. squirrel. It's not quite bacon, but no. there's no bullshit in this, guys. We we saw the evidence on Twitter. There was Beastly and his family gathered around. They managed to make a squirrel go six ways, which I was impressed with. <laughs> hey, tell me about it, right? <laughs> Shit. So uh, I Beastly, I gotta tell you a story. When I went to college, my first day at college, right? I went to college to be a, a park ranger. I wanted to be like, a, I was going to be a forestry major. I wanted to be a park ranger riding a, riding a, a horse around, you know, like a national park. Right? I can still see it, Briar. The first day I get there, the dorm has kind of like a cookout, like a meeting. And, uh, you know, just so like a mixer. So everybody can kind of, you know, introduce themselves and say hello. And the, the RAs had, you know, the grill out and they were grilling burgers and hot dogs, you know, food. And this one dude, man, this dude had a beard that would make Tefty Tef jealous. This thing was fucking gigantic. Dude had to weigh 300 pounds easy. He was just a, a mountain of a man. And, I, I, you know, you guys know I'm a pretty big dude. So for me to say that, like, this dude was huge. I weigh 300 pounds, so I there can't wait to be face to face. There was this dude rolling around, and uh, all of a sudden he just kind of spots a squirrel out of the corner of his eye. So he pulls out one of those pocket knives those buck knives right he opens that fucker up whew, skewers that fucking squirrel from, yeah, right i'm saying i'm saying 10 yards it was a pretty good distance 10 yards with a buck knife that's not a throwing knife either that's just just like a yeah. pocket knife he fucking skewers that squirrel goes over picks it up rips the fucking thing's skin off and throws it on the fucking grill and Not i knew man. from that moment on I made a mistake going to this college. <laughs> I made a fucking grave mistake. <laughs> Sounds to me like you ran into like college. bear. You, you ran into like bear grills, like washed up cousin or something. <laughs> right. man. He's like, it, it was you know for me it was. I'm from the city, so things like that I've never done, never experienced. My dad never hunted, and Kate and I are gearing up to go deer hunting next year. 
Wait, wait, wait. So, are, you, are you referring to shooting a squirrel in cold blood as hunting? You right, gotta we crawl just get you walk, Gary. Here. You gotta fucking crawl, okay? You're not gonna hunt, take away my hunt. Did you, you, you your hunt? What did you shoot him with? What did you, what did you shoot him with? I shot him with a, a Winchester uh, uh, break barrel air rifle. A thousand air feet rifle. per yeah, thousand <laughs> feet per second. I mean, you could kill somebody with this yeah, thing. Those I'm not air kidding. Don't fuck around. You could really kill someone with it. It's it's a. Yeah. I shot through my my grill with it. You know, both sides. So it's you don't need it's a void a, for it either, do you? For an no, air rifle? No, no, you sure don't. <laughs> and so you know, I saw the squirrel. I zeroed my my scope. I shot him in the face, and that's the first time I heard a squirrel talk. He's like, ah! I said, what? I shot him in the fucking face. And then he hid from me on the top of the tree. And then when he came around to the bottom, I shot him through his side. And he just fell down and became lunch. I, you know, I peeled off his skin. I started to gut him. And my daughter walked up to me and she was crying. Nova. She said, Dad, I don't like to see you murder animals. I said, Nova. It'll make you feel It'll make you feel better when you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. You saw how happy she was. Look, I said, no, but he was already dead when I brought him here. She said, he was? I said, yeah. She said, okay, I'll watch. Mm -hmm. So she finished watching me gut him. Then I, I cooked him. And the kids enjoy it. So that's something I'll probably do every year. What, what, do, you, what do you serve with squirrel? Tradition. Uh, my question Jesus, is, man. like, is that a, is there a wine pairing that goes with squirrel? Is it like uh, mashed potatoes on the side? Green beans? You know, the like, only wine we drink here is, is <laughs> you can do whatever the fuck you want. You know? <laughs> You know, my house is a pink Moscato house, so I guess that's what we'll have to try. But the, the way that I I, I feel like box this, wine is the way to go with squirrel. Uh, box, Franzia. Uh, Fran box not wine. just any box wine, Franzia. <laughs> I boiled this little guy, right? You know, it took a while for me to get the, the, everything together. But I boiled him. I seasoned it. I had some onions and carrots and stuff in there with him. Boiled him for about an hour and a half. Then I took him out, cooled him, and then I, I battered him with a milk wash and deep fried that little motherfucker. And let me tell you this. Like Nova said in the video, she said, Dad, now when I see squirrels running in the trees, I'll say, you look so delicious. Because when you do them right, squirrels bang, man. Bang, bang. Happy things. I can't believe you spent an hour and a half deep frying a squirrel for a canopy. <laughs> a canopy is worth of food. Like, how many people... Did you, I can't believe you made it go six ways. Did you give people... Like, did everyone get to sniff the meat? Was that how the you shared it? The only thing you guys didn't see was Kate trying it in the kitchen. You know, because Kate, she just had her hair in a ponytail. She didn't want me to upload it, but she took a bite and she just like collapsed. I, I told, I said, Kate, it'll be okay. She I said, think, I, just, I think this was an elaborate plot by Beasley to show them how thankful they should be this Thanksgiving because <laughs> he's you got not turkey, you lucky squirrel. <laughs> you got backyard squirrel too. Shit, we didn't even go to the woods. There's, there's a lot more meat on that turkey than the squirrel. That's for sure. <laughs> no. I mean, think how many squirrels you'd have to slaughter to feed your family. Be out there all night with your air rifle. Yeah, Sack I mean, a guess squirrel. what? I would, too. I'd be out there. I need some infrared goggles, and then I'd be set. For the people joining us for the first time, just in case you didn't know, Revolver Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics. You, you know? can be a part of the show. <laughs> Sometimes it's about games. Sometimes it's about eating the fucking squirrel. <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes it's about hunting. <laughs> Yeah, Hunt, air rifles. Hunting. I can't fucking believe you called that hunting. Did you go out in like camo gear as well? Night yeah, vision goggles. You know what? I got, a, I got a rifle rest. I went about this the right way, okay, Gary? I got hunting. a rifle rest. What threat were you in from the squirrel? What possible uh, you know, threat? For, I don't hunger. know about you, That's Gary, but in America, <laughs> men have nuts. And, and and squirrels eat nuts. And I, I, I've never seen them attack, but if they do, I'm thinking that's the first thing they're going to go for. So I protected Savage. myself. Briar, you understand. I mean, when you put it like that, it's an undeniable truth. Undeniable we need to protect fact. protect our nuts from the squirrels. You're damn right. <laughs> Here's the thing, Gary. I see what you're saying. He didn't go hunting out for squirrel for sport. Yeah. Say, like you would for a massive deer with a giant rack, so to speak. Yeah. You know what I mean? This like, to his family. He's that when you go out to hunt, you're providing food. So it doesn't really matter what you're shooting. Well, I guess it kind of does matter what you're shooting. Uh, it matters what you're hunting for. Yeah. But you get what I'm getting at. It's not like he went out and he's like, oh, look at the, you know, the size of the tail on this squirrel, and he's going to get it mounted on the wall. There's no and... meat on the tail, just in case you get it. All right, good to know, I guess. A squirrel's head on a wall on a placard. I could see that in the BC house. You should so. totally get the squirrel's head mounted. <laughs> it's a little tiny square. I, I might soft a pelt and send it to you, my friend. Yo, you you guys... can totally flip this, man. You can flip this into something that's going to work with for you, man. You bring this carcass, you know, the leftover squirrel carcass, into your boss's office on Monday morning. You say, "Look, man, I need a raise." You see what you've got me doing? I got. I'm feeding my kids squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> I need All twenty six of them. Bro. One squirrel. 
done. <laughs> I'm 26 of them. <laughs> I don't know if they believe it, but I, I, you know, that's a hell of an interesting conversation at work. Shit. Well, you know, got I got me. a big mouth, so I already told everybody at work. They're like, man, you, you, you're eating squirrel? I said, yeah, why not? And they looked at me like, oh, God. you know, you need to go get some deer or something, man. Go go hunt a turkey. You got to start small. You know, I don't have any issue with starting with squirrel. You know, some people out in the in the woods actually do this and eat it all the time. I saw a guy eat a moose nose. I think a squirrel's a step up from that. So if you'd like to be a part of the show, you can submit your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash briar rabbit. That's twitch.tv forward slash briar rabbit. The oh, videos man, get shared that... on YouTube at briar rabbit's YouTube channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. If you're unable to see the live feed or the video format, check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite f- podcast service provider. And with that, welcome to Revolver Live, the Squirrel Thanksgiving episode. <laughs> the Squirrel Thanksgiving episode. <laughs> That's the name of the podcast right there. <laughs> I mean, we do ask for suggestions and things in emails. If you can just send us videos of the most elaborate way you've slaughtered a squirrel as well, apparently that's something we're really interested in too. So, you know, yeah, send well, us that. So I'll tell your tale. They might think that you 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 know hunting a squirrel is beneath them, but I know the hard work. It's and not dedication the hunting; goes it's the it. eating. <laughs> Let's be oh. clear. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I just question it. every element of it. If I'm honest with you, Mo- many parts of that journey I had problems with, but I went along with it. <laughs> we appreciate your support, Gary. We Yo, Gary, you got something really exciting that you've been working on for a couple of weeks. It's come to fruition. <gasps> Let's it hear has. It, Gary. It has. Um, we've been in touch with a few um, businesses and compatriots online that share right. our Only the, love. The most top end sponsors for the show. Oh, yeah, I mean, they share the same passions that we do. Right? They do. They're, they're exactly. people that are interested in the same sort of things that motivate us. And what really motivates us are um, penises, bags of them. And we found a website. <laughs> bagaddicts.com who uh, saw that passion in us and thought that they wanted to buy into the dream of Revolver Live <laughs> so we are now officially sponsored by bagofdicks.com thank god um, <laughs> honestly we are there we have got a, a 20% off promo code which will be dropping live next week and we hope that you guys will partake in the uh, the finest wares from their site in fact they've given us an advertising read which um, I'm going to share with you guys now so gather around for a little uh, fireside story time here mm. there are times in life when sometimes you want to give that special someone the perfect gift a gift so precious and majestic that mere flowers perfume or aftershaves just won't cut it no for times like these there's only one gift that will show them the caliber of your persons and your true intentions and that ladies and gentlemen is a small jewelry box filled with a variety of colored male genitalia bagofdicks.com offers an anonymous mail order service where you yes you can send anyone you so desire a purple headed yogurt slinger they have a smorgasbord of products to suit every one of your specific pork sword needs including the brand new boxer singing dicks Revolver oh are pleased to announce our sponsorship and as of next week, as said, we'll be offering you, our perverted and debauched listeners, the exclusive and frankly ludicrous promotion of 20% off any order from bagofdicks.com. You will not Code find a bag pending. of dicks for a cheaper price anywhere. No, you won't. You won't. And the, the size and variety is amazing. I can't guarantee that the recipient of your giggle stick love package will offer you the sexual favors that you so desire, but <laughs> let's be honest, it probably can't hurt your chances too much either. Exactly. If you're convinced about the perfect marriage of penis and confectionery, then head straight to bagadix.com and remember your Revolver Life promo code for that sweet discount on your order of baloney ponies. Thank you. <laughs> this is beautiful. That is the most poetic and beautiful thing I've ever heard read. Well I done, just got Gary. my anniversary gift. Well done. Do we have a coupon code, Gary, to give to the people? Next week, guys, Next we'll week be we'll posting it on code. Twitter. Uh, so if you follow all of our Twitters, we'll be retweeting the shit out of that. 20% off. We want to really juice these guys up and show them how much we, the up. Revolver guys, um, the viewers of Revolver, support them um, and how much we, we love dicks. So if we can get some bag of dicks, I think it's something like $10 for a bag. So you guys are going to be getting this for like $8. Oh, it's worth man. it just for $8 just to see a bag of dicks come through someone's mailbox. So you know, I yeah. can't think yeah, of a more perfect anything. gift come Christmas time than a bag of dicks. Honestly, stocking stuffers. Like, stocking stuffers. I'm getting Secret stocking Santa. stuffers for everybody. 
yeah. from this website, man. This is, this is perfect. <laughs> and what better pairing for watching an episode of Revolver Live than, you know, nibbling on a bag of dicks? You know, the perfect confectionery for listening to bag of... To, to, <laughs> the Revolver the Live. Change the name of our podcast. The bag Can we of become dicks the bag of dicks? Is it too late to be the bag of dicks podcast? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's do it. I'm the, I'm in. Uh, I'm uh, all in. You know, you guys could. Yeah, I'll probably eat a bag of dicks myself. If I eat a squirrel, I'll definitely eat a bag of dicks. Take, I'll take two. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I got the munchies. I, said, I need two. Are you serious? Scope it out. Wait till next week. Save yourself some money. Um, we're pressing them hard for the promo code, but you know we're really happy to see it. We're all going to have some um, some bags next week to to demo. We might even try them live on the show. But uh, that's that's the biggest news for us. That's like probably the biggest news we've ever had as a, in our lives, really collectively. Um, yeah, a bag so of them. I feel we we've peaked. One, we when I when I told my family that. Our, our podcast, our little podcast, our humble little podcast was getting sponsored by a name brand as big as BagAndDicks.com. I saw real respect in my children's eyes for the first time in a long time. Yeah. God damn. <laughs> my dad told me he was proud of me for the first time. Yeah. My dad you was know, like, I, son, I'm proud of you. And I was like, that's the first time you've ever said that. I've, uh, I've never seen my father cry uh, until I told him. That I was sponsored by Bag of Dicks and one solitary tear rolled down his uh, his cheek. It was a it was a precious time for me. Well, you know, I, I saw it on Twitter, uh, Gary, when you shared with us privately what had happened. And I called Kate into the bedroom. And, of course, as soon as I did that, she ran in there and took her clothes off. I said, no, this is a different kind of dick I'm showing you today. And I showed her the feet. <laughs> and she cried. And very seldom does one of her feet raise up at the back. But she hugged me and kissed me. And she was so proud of our Bag of Dicks sponsorship. Thank you. Thank you, Bag of Dicks. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. So, we've spoken about hunting squirrels and penis shaped confectionery. Do you think we should talk about some video games? Possibly. Maybe. <laughs> A little bit. Maybe. A little bit. Should we um should we start with the the hot topic this week? Some good news for Destiny 2. I am so impressed. So impressed. Um Brian, I don't know if you want to take it away the Luke Smith tweet. Yeah, uh, I don't week. have it loaded up. Let me uh, see if I can find the exact words from Luke Smith. Uh, you kind of surprised me with that one. Yeah, lie. no worries. Sorry to drop you in it. In the while Brian's <laughs> looking it up, um, there's been a lot of, um, I guess, discussion in the community back and forth. Um, some people, you know, questioning um, how much fun they're having in Destiny Two. Us personally, we're having a, a lot of fun. We had trials every week we we play and we have an absolute blast we're really loving it still not playing it as frequently as we did d1 but when we do play it we still have a great time yeah. the biggest question has been what's the roadmap for d2 what are we going to do to keep us hooked and keep us playing the game as much as we want to be and luke smith um tweeted out this week something which i think is hopefully going to answer those prayers so um brian do you have some thoughts on that yeah, well, let me uh, read out his exact words. Next week, the Destiny 2 team will detail the system side of the December update. It includes economy updates, uh, vendor and acquiring their gear, tokens, legendary shards, investment updates, new reward systems for weapon and armor, and gameplay updates and more. Additionally, at Noseworthy and I will be answering some questions and addressing community feedback we've been reading since launch. Um, so this is a change for this live stream this live stream was going to be all about gear right it was going to be all about they were going to i, I assume they're just going to do another fashion show we've seen these in the past they're going to bring out some guardians show off some of the new loot you can get in the new dlc and you know that was going to wrap it up but i think based on the feedback they got from their last live stream that was pretty pretty negative across the community mm -hmm. um they really decided to switch things up they're going to address the the core audience that plays Destiny on the regular. And I think that's really smart because when they do these these live streams on Twitch, that's who's watching, right? They got 100,000 people watching these live streams. These guys are the most core, hardcore players in you know of their game. So to tell them about the kind of the lighthearted stuff, the side stuff, that's not what th these players are looking for. They're looking for what Luke Smith is talking about. So this is really exciting. Um, you know... I'm trying not to get my hopes too high up. Like I, I, I'm keeping it reasonable myself. Um, I understand that they've had limited development time before the December update actually ships, but I am really excited that they're addressing the community concerns on this live stream. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's something that we spoke, they listened, they responded, and you know, obviously from from 
Luke Smith coming out and saying that, I think we can all be um, at least optimistic. I think, you, you, you know, at this point here, to still be pessimistic, I think you're just biting the hand that feeds you. You know, they've extended an olive branch out and said, look, guys, we know you're talking. We're going to address the chatter and we're going to show you what we've got planned and what's coming in um, your quality of life updates. And I think, you know, we should they should be applauded. You know, we can criticise when there's time to criticise. And I think times like now, we should applaud the transparency. People say, Bungie, talk to us, speak more, tell us what you're thinking. That's exactly what they're doing here. So kudos to them. Yeah. Yeah. For me, um, you know, I love Destiny 2 uh, probably more than I did Destiny 1 because I, I was able to do more and accomplish more, especially having more than one character I leveled up. I've noticed myself, my wife has as well, that we play a lot less. We, we log on at the beginning of the week. We log on uh, when Xur's available to see what he has. We do a few things. Normally, it's just she and I, so we don't have a bunch of people to do a lot of stuff. Uh, and we're playing a lot less. So, you know, I don't follow these uh, live streams. I wish I, I did. I, I got to actually find out exactly when they're done. But um, to me, that's really good news that this, this issue is being addressed to give players like me who want to be in the world, who want to do more, uh, a, a chance to experience more things in, in, in the universe. So as someone who's not as hardcore as the rest of the team, I'm, I'm really excited to hear this news. Yeah, me as well. Um, I think more importantly was that um, they were they were obviously talking about this before they announced it, and it was during a holiday. So you know that this was a hot pressing topic for them to come out during a holiday weekend and completely. I'm assuming they're going to restructure the entire stream. Like maybe the fashion show will still be in there. I don't know, but um, I, I think it's really important. I mean, they were. Definitely talking with each other um, behind closed doors about how they wanted to present this information. And I feel like it was in perfect timing, man, because it was starting to get really, really dark out there on Twitter. With <laughs> Yeah, Twitter, it, it, Reddit, <sighs> YouTube man. videos. I mean, Twitch street, streaming Destiny uh, right now, it's, it's a little bit exhausting, even though I'm having fun playing the game. Like, I've been playing Iron Banner all week and having a blast with it, but... The constant barrage of it's so fucked up, you know, the end game. I can't believe you're still playing this. The end game is completely fucked. Or what do you think about last week's live stream? You know, like that kind of thing. It was just like, you know, like I've addressed it. Like, I almost feel like I want to start making YouTube videos about this so I could just I pop one 10 yeah. minute video out about it and just be like, refer to the video. That's like all everything I wanted to say is in there because I don't want to just it's to have this negativity. Even. <clears throat> It's infecting the streams. It, it it's just it's just it's harsh. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. So it's it's like if I'm having fun playing Iron Banner, the last thing I really want to talk about is you know the shortcomings of mm -hmm. uh, Destiny Two. Like that's just how it is, man. I'm having fun. I'm playing with Wilson and Gary, and we're we're just fucking we're holding dicks and stomping asses. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a party. And we're having a lot of fun, you know? And then we play Destiny afterwards, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. If we have time. Like, I understand people are frustrated. I'm reading chat right now. I understand people are frustrated, and, you know, we don't want, like, the budgie apologist, but, like, if I'm sitting here having a good time playing Destiny, the last thing I want to do is interrupt my good time and the good the fun I'm having to talk about, you know, the, the shortcomings of the game, you know? Yeah, it's totally I understandable. Yeah, I hear you, man. for someone who streams and has the following you do, Briar, uh, you know, a short five or ten minute video might be the answer, yeah. and that way you can keep everything compartmentalized. You got your positive vibes, and you keep those negative vibes over here while you play the game. Totally, man. And like we hear you, dude. Like we're just as frustrated as everybody else. Like we want to play the game every day with shit to do and grind for stuff. Like that's the huge thing. Like we all want this stuff. It's just sometimes, man. Like you just. You hear enough of it, man. Like, I, I was, like, almost to a breaking point the other day, like, with Twitter and stuff. Like, I get it. We're all frustrated. Everyone's got the exact same fucking opinion. And then that tweet popped out. And actually, I think it was Briar, me, and you were playing. I think we were doing some Iron Banner. And um, <clears throat> we were like, oh, man, what a sigh of relief. Like, I'm hopeful. I'm cautiously optimistic, but I'm hopeful. Yeah. yeah. Good news. Yep. So we are 30 minutes in. Should we start the show? I think we should. <laughs> let's bullshit a little bit more, Gary. Oh, what, <laughs> sure. what seasonings did I use on that squirrel? No, let's go. <laughs> so for those of you that have skipped to this point 30 minutes in with the timestamps, um, the first topic is 
playing or paying for the same game on multiple platforms. So it's something that I was thinking about. Skyrim is pretty much a meme right now. So the game has been released five times and is now playable on seven platforms, which will be nine once the PSVR exclusivity finishes up. So nine different platforms, not including the Yobo, you can play Skyrim on. Um, which at this Gary, point, did you buy it on uh, on, uh, on what? Twitch or uh, the, Switch. the Switch? Sorry. Yes, yeah. I, oh, I just, I just bought a copy this that. week as well. I bought Skyrim Special Edition on PC this week as well. Oh, <laughs> shit. Nice. I mean, I've got it on PC. That's the um, one to get. I haven't ever had it on any other console except the Switch. So I've got Switch and, and PC myself. Um, yeah, the Switch one's great. Switch version is really? really, really good. Yeah, for different reasons, though. Like, yeah, every game's good on the Switch. Just like, it, literally game, every, yeah. every game is good on the Switch. It's, it's, it's Damn, almost a universal trait. Switch. Dude, I bought no. that game so many times, man. I bought it for um, PS. What was I it? bought it for PS3. PS4. I bought it for Xbox 360, and my Xbox One of Seven took a shit. I think that was towards the end <laughs> of the seventh lifespan. I don't know. Best what's console going of on. all time, though. Those red lights. Something so good. In the Wilson bought water. it seven times. Something in the fucking <laughs> water. Uh, but <laughs> something in these parts. Then I bought it for PS3, which lasted significantly longer than my mm-hmm. Xbox 360s. I got the remastered version on pc um and i'm trying yeah. to think oh and then i got the, the the one for uh when it came out on ps4 yeah well i got the ps4 i got the ps3 i got it on pc uh i really don't play it on pc but i'm holding out i want to get it on psvr i hear that's the best way right now to play it um it's been getting really mixed reviews on psvr really well yeah. i've heard lots of good things about it i, I know that too. I've heard I I've heard graphically it doesn't hold up to, you know, the remasters or Makes sense. it probably looks worse than the Switch. Uh but the fact that you're actually in the game and it feels like you're actually in Tamriel, to me that's a big deal. That's a huge draw for me. It was either that or the Switch. And I'm thinking to take it mobily or to actually be in that world well, and VR is like, like you're you're literally standing in Skyrim. The world. Yeah, that to me that's yeah. that's the best way for me to experience it. I'm so. doing the same thing with Fallout, uh, another game going back to Gary's topic that I'm buying <laughs> twice. You know, is, I, Fallout 4 comes out is it sometime in December, I think, for yeah. uh Vive for the VR on PC and I'm I'm going to buy uh, another copy of Fallout 4 on PC because I want to play it in VR. Like that's just seems like think, an amazing experience. Briar, when you played it, I mean, I don't think you'd necessarily disliked Fallout Four. It just wasn't enough of a leap from Fallout Three. Do you think that playing it in VR will make you make the experience better for you? Um, I, I don't think it's going to improve the game itself, but being in VR in like a in such a realized world as the Fallout world. I think it's going to be a really cool VR experience. Because everything, you yeah. can touch everything in that game. Oh, right? Man. And, like, yeah, you know, right. the, gu- the game is weapon based, so you'll be shooting guns and you'll be walking around in power armor and, you know, you'll be exploring and you'll be building stuff. And, oh, man. You know, like, to me, Fallout 4 has some real flaws, but Fallout 4 and VR seems really promising. I'm definitely looking forward to checking it out. The VAT system in VR? Oh, that man, that's cool, be right? Crazy. That be cool. See, that's oh, the thing. God. That's where I think there's going to be the difference because the complaints that I've seen around Skyrim um, with the, uh, obviously, textures and graphics being one thing, that's what it is. I don't think that's essential. It's the combat showing its age, the fact that Skyrim combat is clunky, and in VR it's, it's it, it even shown to be more clunky, whereas I think Fallout's got the edge there because that VAT's targeting system is pretty uh, intuitive with a keyboard and mouse so with a pointer it's it's going to work really really well so yeah i think i'm going to be keeping skyrim that. used like a more advanced uh weapon control system with like kinetic motion and like you're yeah. able to swing wherever instead of just being like a gi joe kung fu grip kind of thing i think it'd be mm. more interesting to me but fallout 4 you know guns just work well in vr that's why we see so many shooters in vr I mean, like, Skyrim's not the only thing that I'm guilty of doing this with. I mean, no. <laughs> Destiny 1, I bought on PlayStation, uh-huh. Xbox. Destiny 2, I bought on PlayStation, PC. Yep. Overwatch, I've bought on console and now PC. I got Me it on too. PC last night, and oh my god, Hanzo is amazing. <laughs> he is amazing. Yeah, everybody and check like, out Wilson 309's uh, YouTube for clips of him going ham. His first night out with uh, Hanzo. He put up a YouTube video last night, and it was it was pretty fun to watch. I gotta I gotta admit, it was fun. It felt good. It felt responsive. But like I'm finding myself like rebuying 
first person shooter games on PC because like it's not only for like the graphical update, but I'm really starting to enjoy mouse and keyboard now. Um, and like obviously, like I'm having <clears throat> this isn't oh my god, how do I say this without sounding like Gary? Um, <laughs> I'm having a it's good just, time. Hold your breath. I'm having a good time. Um, <laughs> basically, uh, I'm really enjoying PC gaming right now, and yeah. it's uh, the mouse and keyboards it's cool to feel yourself getting better as well. And plus like coming over from console and having like almost a hundred hours on Hanzo and like, there's really not that much different about mouse and keyboard. It's feels just same amount of commands, jump, scatter arrow, sonic arrow, punch. I'll, I'll tell you, Wilson, I, I'm going through the same transition you are right now is like kind of learning the mouse and keyboard. And one of the things that I noticed, especially in destiny is that I feel like I'm so much more athletic. Like I feel yeah. like I'm so much more responsive, and I can I can do things. Last night, a lot of people may know I hooked I built a brand new gaming PC, and last night I brought the old gaming PC actually down to the living room and was hooking that up to the to the main TV, uh, and I put I put uh, Destiny up and I decided you know I'll grind a couple of games of Iron Banner, make sure everything's working okay. You know I just moved the PC. Anytime you move a PC, it seems like something could go wrong. And I was playing with a PS4 controller, which I've played for three years with a PS4 controller. Like, I'm very familiar. I felt just so slow and sluggish with that PS4 controller after I've been playing for two months with the, or a month with the mouse and keyboard. That I was like, I, all of a sudden I start Googling, like, how can I get a mouse and keyboard on my couch? <laughs> lap board. You need to get that lap board in, man. It's so good. I literally do not have a con- I have a controller now for, like, world adventure games and anything that's like that but lap board yeah. for the couch is, is pretty much mandatory yeah i mean for me i find that i buy a lot of games on the pc um not just for the, the keyboard and mouse control um but I, I like to see games fully realized without the technical limitations so the witcher uh, the witcher 3 is an amazing game no matter where you play it but it is in at its best on the pc without a shadow of a doubt the frame rate is one thing, but the fact that that world that you're in, uh, when you see the like the rolling hills going down into Novigrad City and you see it lifting up, to me that's a fully realised world. And there was a lot of controversy around The Witcher Three in its original E3 demo. I don't know if you remember, it was it was like it looked stunning, and then there was a big downgrade when it was released because they had to make it work on console. But on PC, when you can crank it up to max settings and put mods on it you get such an experience and more so mods. I mean, do you guys ever dabble in the mod um, community and see what you can do with games with mods, which you just don't really get on console as well, which has bought, made me rebuy games. What's, have you guys tried mods at all? Yeah, for uh, Skyrim, man. There's, Skyrim, like, yeah. there's like whole, uh, beastly, there's like whole new adventures and dungeons and mm-hmm. places yeah. to loot and hang out in, man. Yeah, the, the mods are fantastic. But that's just the only... A company that really fools with mods on consoles and and you know as a console gamer thank you uh but being that it's the only one it hasn't been enough to just keep me on those particular games myself personally when it comes to buying a game from a previous generation or from another console i'll end up buying it if it adds something to that um that initial experience like gears of war ultimate i have that on xbox one and that's such a huge leap over the original and I got it at such a cheap price, I couldn't, you know, resist. But seeing that compared to the original 360 game is night and day. And so for me, things like that. Um, what is it? Uh, Nathan Drake Collection. That's another yeah. one that the game looks so much better. You know, I mean, I got a list of games. I was looking at some of these games that are available. you buy a remaster, Beastly, do you, do you generally play all the way through it? Like, so no. you, you played. So why do you buy them? Like, that's. I, I, me, I buy them. For me, like, it's like, I don't buy remasters for games that I've already played because. Like I already played it. Like I already, I already got that experience. And, that, yeah. You know, slightly better graphics because they're not like the native Drake experience. It looks better than the original PS3 release, but it doesn't look as good as like a native PS4 release, right? Yeah. So it's like, but that's a lot of game to play through and beat, though. I beat the first two in the Nathan Drake collection. You did. Uh, you know. And yeah. You'd, well, you'd beat beating them on the PlayStation Three as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of wow. course. Uh, and, and, but for me, that's a story that you can go through over and over again and really enjoy. I mean, every time you see it, it's like watching your favorite film. 
So uh, I, I but, rarely do that. I rarely play through a game. I don't do it that often. But when that game came out, I was really excited about it. It was something for me that was a big part of my PlayStation lineage, a part of PlayStation's history, a big, you know, AAA PlayStation exclusive that I love when it came out. And just to be able to play it, you know, I guess the way more more of the way it was meant to be for me was a big deal. But like if you look at Bioshock, the Bioshock collection, that's another game that looks drastically different from the original game. Halo Master Chief Collection. Uh, these games, I'll buy them if they have something new to offer and if it's a game that had enough of a pull to pull me back. But for the most part, many games I don't pick up. Uh, I got Ratchet and Clank because my kids never played it. That's a huge leap over the original. It's remade from that, the ground up. Yeah, that was a that's a different remake. type of experience. Yeah, yeah, that's not a remaster. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm glad you brought up the the Halo Master Chief Collection because I thought that was absolutely awesome. How you could um, hit the back button and mm -hmm. swap graphics and yeah, see how and, far and they've Halo come. Halo Two, and, how they redid all those maps. Find I mean, yourself that's... liking one particular level the old way and another level you like it the new way and it's definitely really interesting i like it when it's stuff like that too but sometimes i'm just like man i really want to play that game again and this would be a perfect clean slate for yeah. you know right. i don't have any saves i could just jump in create a character i've never created before maybe try something different maybe try being good for once in these games instead of being a total <laughs> cock bag and going around and stealing everything there's nothing like, wrong with bags of cocks my i have a problem in game that i steal everything <laughs> It doesn't matter what the fuck it is, dude. You I also I never spend... invite Wilson to your house. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. That's in game. Really? I'm going to be a fantasy thief. Anyway, uh, every time you I, crouch, I'll you spend a half an hour. Somebody. I will spend a half an hour wiping an entire house clean and. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna check out one of my favorite games of all time, Wilson in the light B4. Orange, yeah. yeah, I can just see Wilson get down next to just an NPC. He sees that red little reticle on the person's side and he still grabs the shit. Wilson Just comes home at the end of the day, he's got a pocket full of fucking lighters. I can guarantee you. <laughs> lighters. <laughs> he's got fucking lighters. <laughs> the fucked up thing is my lighter always gets stolen. Like, that's the fucked up. Is that karma? Because I steal so it, much it, it shit in why. game. It might be why. I want to be a fantasy thief. I don't want to be a real thief. <laughs> Damn. And cock blocks my time because I'll like make say, I'll be like, okay, I, I took this item and he didn't notice it and I'll save. And then I'll go, you know, and I'll be like, okay, now I got to get this. And I'll start going around. And next thing I know, I'll have all the valuable shit. And then I'll be picking up, like, wooden <laughs> cups and forks. Yeah, and shit. It's just Damn, a problem. Just, just seeing how much you get. You got some Winona Ryder shit going on, man. I remember Smoking that. like a true <laughs> addict, Willie. Like a true addict. We, we're here no, with you. Uh, for me, me. In, in the console space, um, obviously the PC I rebuy for, for those reasons there. But for me, the console space, the one thing that gets me to rebuy almost anything is portability. If it's a handheld, I'll rebuy it. So the Vita, I have like an extensive Vita library, um, as you guys know. Not the Yobo. That's like it's a portable. No, that's just a turn off, man. That's not a portable. We'll put that away. <laughs> Don't mention the Vita and the Yobo in the same sentence. Don't sully the name of the Vita by bringing the Yobo into it. <laughs> that was oh, fucking harsh. <laughs> it sure was. Rude. But like the Switch. What an ass. Um, you guys know as well that I'm massively supporting the Switch. Like, I've got a, a growing Switch library as well. And even if I don't actively play the Switch as much as I do, like, my PC, I love the fact that I've got a portable experience of a game that I know and love. So I've got Doom and Skyrim on there, which I'll never complete. I know I'll never complete, but I may play them on journeys, on trips, commuting, etc. And that's a, com like BC said, it's a completely new experience. That's the, the one golden carrot that I'll buy any game again if you make Switch it possible. Is the only right. console, though, man, that ever really uh, delivered on that dream, uh, Gary, of a console experience on the know. go. It's really PSP, the first time. I thought, did it right at the beginning. No, like, no. I got six PSPs right there, man. There's no console quality experience oh, on that. Oh, man, right at the beginning, I thought it was pretty dope. And then the PS Vita, I mean, right at the beginning, it was a powerful system. Now, that thing is years old at this point. It looks... 2011. You know, came out in 2011. PS Vita I think it was a little ahead of its time. 2011, bro. Damn, I can't believe it's that old. But yeah, yeah. I mean, like when I, the first time I saw a PSP, I was like, "Holy shit, that that looks Me phenomenal!" You know? Oh god, I loved it. Um, I one. Have you guys ever bought the same game twice on the same console? Oh. I know I have. I'm just trying yes. to think of an example. And it, 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 <laughs> it's, it's a really weird situation. Uh, I bought the disc version of God of War Three Remaster on PS4. Uh -huh. I had a few friends come over to visit. And it disappeared. Oh, weird. 
And so I bought the digital version. Those fucks never came back. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But that's really the only it's an extenuating circumstance that that led to that. But for I the bought, most part, hell no. I bought the you know the super collector's edition of Destiny, Destiny that came with the <laughs> with the ghost Dinglebot. Yeah, with Dinglebot. And then yeah. I bought the digital version later because I was sick of having to bring the disc up and upstairs and downstairs. <laughs> so I bought the digital oh, version, man. too. That is the definition of first world problems. <laughs> I don't want to eject the disc. <laughs> <laughs> a, he's a console release, man. What the hell? That's great. I'm, I'm trying to think of... Um, you know, it mostly that would go back to like my my old like Super Nintendo eras. I think I bought Earthbound like two times, once retail and Ooh. once another time when it was crazily priced at like two, three hundred plus bucks. Shit. But modern games, Red Faction, Red Faction Two for PlayStation Two. Me and uh-huh. Conman played that game so much that it burnt. That there was some, there was something wrong with the disc. It had a visible, it had a visible ring that if you looked close enough, it said "get a fucking life" around (laughs) it. Like, and we had to go get another copy. Was that the version? Was it Red Faction One or Two that you could dig little holes in the um the rock, like you could just blow up the one? Definitely, I I don't know about. I think that was one one, because you started off in a mine in one. That was so good because you could have like teamed it up. You could do team death matches with your buddy mm-hmm. and you could like dig off like a fucking ferret and just start like a little hole somewhere that you could never find you. It was so good. Yeah. So That's your good. strategy. Yeah, be a <laughs> ferret, man. You were a proximity yeah. mine guy in Golden Eye 64, weren't you? Odd job proxy mines all the way. <laughs> the worst. Uh, I bought this twice too. Uh, the what worst. The? One of the worst Call of Duty's Call of Duty Ghost. Why'd you buy that twice? So you could play with your wife? Yeah, I had one. I had it, you know, the disc version. I, and with the PS4, I was still on the physical collection bandwagon. When it first came out, I bought all those fucking discs I never use anymore. Uh, and she wanted to play on her own TV, you know, separate it from me and not do the split screen crap. So I got hers and she played it like once. So it was still a waste of money. Also, I highly disagree that that is even in the top three of worst I, Call of I'm Duty talking of shit. all time. <laughs> I was reliving the past, Brian. I agree with you. You know, uh, looking especially at some of the ones that have come out in the last five years. Uh, I, I definitely disagree with my own statement there, but I remember when this was the latest mm-hmm. Call of Duty, everybody shat on it, and I was everybody one of the shits on the shatting. latest Call of Duty though. <clears throat> it was so pretty played, bad. I played World War II this week. <laughs> um, please, please tell me about it, Gary. Well, World War II. I finished it this week. I'm not going to go into it too long, so we're already hot on time. But yeah, I finished the campaign. Uh, did a little bit of zombies, a little bit of multiplayer. It was all right. It wasn't as bad as everyone says. But um, I heard a lot of yeah. people say it's awesome. You didn't. Oh no, feel not like awesome. You were... It wasn't back, awesome. Uh, by your boots on the ground gameplay style? Uh, I played the campaign mainly more than anything else, and I felt like the campaign was about 10 hours, maybe, oh. no, eight hours, eight hours or so. Um, the first six were, well, the first seven were all Call of Duty, like traditional. I, I love you, Gary. Super, You're the only super. guy I know who'll sit and play through the campaign of Call of Duty like that. I, that's the only reason I bought it. So it was all bombastic soldier stuff. In the last hour, it got really, really emotional really quick. But I felt like it was forced because they, they sort of shoehorned it in. Um, and I think they abused the setting of World War II a little bit because they know that people have emotional links to that. Um, oh. And I don't think it earned its setting properly. But that's my 10-second review on COD. Thank um, you. Tales of Black Friday is our second topic as well. Why um, gotta be black, Shouty? Oh, you talk about the chip. Okay, go ahead. All right. Tales of White Friday, just for All right there. token diversity on this show. It, eh? What did you guys do on White Friday? Did you get any good deals? What was it that uh, what happened? Nobody I was went to doing jail. good, Gary. I didn't leave the house, and then I stumbled upon the Steam sale. <laughs> <laughs> there is a Steam sale going on. He's I going spent right now? about $100, which isn't too bad. Uh, but I bought an awful lot of games. Like I mentioned earlier, I bought Skyrim uh, Special Edition. Uh, I bought Rise of the Tomb Raider. I bought uh, s- some DLC for XCOM 2. I, oh, man, I bought a ton of shit. I can't even remember everything I bought. Uh, but it was it ended up being around $100, I think. Uh, Briar, that's how you know that you're a grown-ass man. When Black Friday comes and goes and you ain't left the fucking house, that's how you do it. Uh, you know... I'm in my late 30s, very close to 40. I've gotten to the stage in life where I'm like, I don't like people telling me when to spend my money. You know, Kate and I, we're at the point now where my wife tells me, she says, we're not celebrating. She did it last year. We're not celebrating Valentine's Day. 
we're not doing it. And I'm like, why? She said, because we fucking love each other every day, and they're not going to tell us when to love each other and spend money when we do this shit all year long. I'm uh, like, yeah, yeah, Kate on the horn with my wife. <laughs> uh, she'll talk to her, man. No, man that's you know, a trap. That's she, a fucking trap. I've had that. I've had that before where they've said, we're not doing Christmas, you know, we're not doing birthdays. And uh-huh. then birthday comes, and they're looking at you like, I thought you'd surprise me with something. That that's a trap. <laughs> listen, anyway. listen, let me tell you this, man. I, I'm a cheap ass black man. I've been there, and Kate didn't look at me like that. She looked at me with a thumbs up and said, "Good, we saved our money." And then she goes back to her computer and goes to work. Um, but Black Friday came, and uh, I stayed in the house. I, you know, I saw a few sales come across my Twitter. I saw some sales on the TV, and I tried to stay away because I have every console that I want, barring possibly a future Xbox One X. Uh, because they're killing it on Digital Foundry. But um, I did come across the PlayStation sale, and I was powerless oh, against it. Yes. And so by the time I'd done, you know, many transactions, Kate came in here and said, oh, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> you, <laughs> Just got, you've ruined everything. You got and credit said, oh, cards surrounded you, PlayStation I'm sorry. The the network cards. You know, Just one more. Just stories. one more. Just, you look up... Hey. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think we found the true story of why he was eating squirrel this week. So it's finally. Uh, <laughs> it was a bad Friday sale. I ate the squirrel on Tuesday. Games. Get your week right. But um, you know, the, the good side of it was I bought about four or five games. I got Mirror's Edge. You know, stuff that I really wanted. It was for the cheap, cheap. I think I got Mirror's Edge for like five bucks. Yeah. So I was like really happy to get that. Got Injustice Two and about three, three more games, three or four more games. And she came in here and she was like, what are you doing? I thought you said you weren't going to fall for this shit. And I was like, well, you know, it was they they passively pulled me in. They weren't like aggressive with it. And she was she just like shook her head at me and looked. I said, well, you can play Injustice now. Then she sat down and started playing. And that's how you pull them in. I, I got to tell you, like the Steam sale was like the discounts were so amazing. Like I, I got yeah. Tomb Raider for like a dollar thirty nine. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. I got. Like, get the I can't remember franchise. everything I bought at this point, but it's like so many games were just like, you know, two dollars, a dollar fifty, yeah. you know, like yep. that kind of price. Like, Do you fall into the thing where it's like one dollar seventy nine for one Tomb Raider or like Wilson said, it'll be like four dollars yeah. thirty nine for every Tomb Raider? No, you have to get every Tomb Raider. I'm the collector. No, I don't do that. I want it all. No, for two dollars. I did buy out. Witcher one, though. <laughs> I'll never probably go. play Witcher one. But I got I one and two, and I haven't even booted them up. <laughs> on Steam. Such great games. Um, for me, man, like Black Friday, like, dude, let's be real. You guys know me. I'm not fucking getting up that early, dude. Like, there's no way <laughs> I'm getting up that early at all. Um, so I slept in. I was going to go to work. I said, fuck it. <laughs> Uh, and then slept in and decided to play Trials of the Nine with uh, Gary Breyer and uh, Lightbreaker. And uh, then Breyer uh, informed me that there was some hot shit going on on Steam. So <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to take a little look see real quick. And I actually I'm I'm pretty proud, man, because I always try to hold out till Cyber Monday. That's always my thing. Like if I want a physical item and I need a new keyboard really bad. So I'm looking forward to get a keyboard tomorrow. But on the. Um, uh, let's see, I got Overwatch. I got the Game of the Year edition for like 30 bucks, and then I got uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 on PC, so I can maybe potentially jump into some of these uh, role playing servers that I'm always gushing at the heart about. That, that was on sale. I think that's the first time I've ever seen it on sale, and it was it, it was like 20 bucks off. It that, cause that rarely so goes on sale. Bucks. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's usually year old game. It is, man, but it's so good. I mean, shit, you hop on Twitch, dude, and there's still thousands and thousands of people watching people play this game, and then like yeah. you add in like the role play and stuff like that. But um, the uh, the only two times I ever see it go on sale is Christmas and Black Friday. That's it for Steam. I'm sure it's come up other times, but I did pretty good, man. I don't buy into that whole thing, man. Like I, I can't, I can't be out in public, dude, and watching. Johnny and some grandma argue over, you know, a pair of That's socks. That's my motherfucking that are... microwave, motherfucker. I've seen crazy shit on the news, man. People throwing bows at granny and stuff and like people ramming carts into each other and shit. And I don't want any part of that, man. I don't support that. I'd rather do like small business Saturday or Cyber Monday. Personally, I, I stay the fuck home. That's like martial Jimmy, law going out on Black Friday. interesting about the UK is that we've had this Black Friday shit forced down our throat um, in the past, like, three years. It was, like, a really good idea that we're going to have a UK Black Friday. I think it started, like, 2015. 
um, maybe maybe 2014 or somewhere around there. We hadn't had it until then. It just wasn't a thing we had in the UK. We'd seen it on the TV, like all this sort of stuff, and UK retailers have kind of just adopted it. Um, so this is like all new to us. So it's it's kind of flashy and exciting. We've had like people fighting in the in the malls and supermarkets now for a couple of years ourselves. So yeah, it's uh, it's, it's another one of your timeless traditions that you've exported worldwide. So thank you for that. You're welcome. I think I think it just came back around to the <laughs> homeland, uh, Gary. Keeps you I on your toes, they, man. Yeah, they just put it, it on does. TV. It, it's been in in the spirit and the blood of the people. It just wasn't televised until 2014. Well, so you guys never had it over there, Gary. It just it just popped up. People started doing it, so then other businesses were forced to compete. Exactly. Well, it's it's just a way that businesses realize that they could have another day where they push sales on you. Uh, it was like a big thing. Hey, this year we're all doing Black Friday. It was just almost like a universal thing that happened. We just didn't really? have didn't have sales that day. It just wasn't a, a day that we had sales. We didn't have Thanksgiving, so Thanksgiving kind of preempts Black Friday because it's a holiday. Yeah thing you know you have the, the thursday and then the friday off like that's a working day for us so people are still at work we don't have it as a holiday um it's it's a work day but it's just a work day where everything's cheaper um so it's all new for us same as halloween like halloween was never we, we celebrated halloween to an extent like as in they'd put up spiders in the windows and shit um but now it's like forced down our throat like in the uk we've kind of become americanized in, in that sense we're getting like inheriting your holidays taking over uh, uh, Gary, do you put consoles in your windows on Halloween? <laughs> no, I put consoles in my trash on Halloween. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> of course. <laughs> Gary, of course. Gary gives out Steam vouchers, Steam gift cards to <laughs> trick-or-treaters to encourage PC don't use. Tell yeah. your parents, don't let That's you it. I give them a leaflet from GameStop telling them what the trading value is on their PS4. Um, <laughs> so. I think we've pretty much exhausted that, yeah. Best yes, and worst have. experiences. And the next I think topic we've, is my own. Yeah. Uh, this is something that is pretty a, a pretty cool for me. It, you know, it's something that led to me learning something new. And I was just curious, have you guys ever learned anything from video games? H have you ever played a game that taught you a real life skill or taught you something useful in real life? I, for example, learned the rules of football and how it's played by playing NCAA 04 with my cousin Ed. And this is probably in 05. I grew up never wanting to play football. I was never allowed to play it in school. Even though my dad watched it, you know, on Thanksgiving, he'd watch it, but he never watched it like a lot of, you know, red-blooded Americans. So it wasn't a part of our, our life or our lineage. And I actually learned how to play football. I actually uh, got an appreciation for the sport and all the, the thought and, and, and teamwork that goes into actually making amazing plays by learning NCAA 04. And so for me, I learned a real life thing from playing a video game. And I was curious as Anything like that ever happened to you guys? Have you guys ever had a video game experience that you were able to apply to the real world? So I learned to play chess. Um, really? Yeah. What was it? Uh, chess Chess Master for NES. What? I think that's what it's yeah. called. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah. sure that's what it's called. It's got the old guy on the front. He's got the little chess yeah, piece, like and he's all guy, getting yeah. ready to make his next move. Um, that's how I learned to play chess, and I I love that game. I'm not any good at it. I'm not really a big strategic thinker you know what i mean i'm more just kind of like make a move and see what happens but party bus, party bus. um the more and more i play it like it's definitely a game of skill um it's kind of a lot like like poker in a sense of anticipating the next move or you know bluffing a hand and getting someone to push more chips in or you know like mm -hmm. so it's 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 really cool i probably would have never have sat down and physically learned chess I love game. chess. Yeah, yeah. It's something my dad taught me. I don't play poker anymore. I was playing it the wrong way the whole time. Uh, every time I played it, my wife got pregnant. Briar, Gary, <laughs> have you guys ever played a video game that taught you something in real life? So for me, um, I'm going to kind of expand that topic. There's some things necessarily that you take from games and you carry on into your real life and you look at it and you think, yeah, like, you know, I now... I'm really, really effective at snapping Japanese schoolgirls' panties. I mean, I'm looking at a long prison sentence, but I'm sure. pretty good at it. Um, <laughs> you know, in what I do. And, and Wilson can case a house and get rid of all their wooden spoons pretty effectively now as well from his time in Skyrim. So that's that's a bonus. Um, but for me, if you look at... Let's take learning for, for what it is. You know, the acquisition of new skills. Um, every game's learning, really. I mean, unless you're playing games that are fundamentally carbon copies of, of one and the other... When you move into a game, especially a game that's got a complex um, mechanic system, 
you kind of have to learn how this all works, what things work, how they interact, how things go together. And you build up a set of virtual skills that are then used to, to kind of problem solve within that sandbox. I think every game has an element of learning and, and you, you know, whether you, you're taking the skills and transferring them into a problem that you face in real life, it might not be lift and drag, you know, in, in destiny, I learn how to, you know, match shields and dunk orbs and shit like that. Like I'm not taking that exact um, activity out into real life, but maybe I'm looking at, you know, how to work collectively as a team. And like you say, Wilson, keeping the morale up in groups and, you know, sensing when the, when the mood is going down and how to elevate and lift that and keep people. Positive. I mean, what do you guys think about that, about, learning life skills from games maybe more than actual fundamental skills pretty huge actually yeah you know I would, so i'd say i learned more of that i i watch my kids uh the, my kids are playing a lot of overwatch now and i watch them kind of talk to their teammates and some of them they know and some of them they don't know and it's been interesting watching them kind of evolve over i don't know they've been playing for about a year and at, at first it was a lot of you know yelling at each other but now it's much more constructive. Like they've they've adapted. They've learned how to communicate with each other in a much more effective way. And um, my kids are shy. Like they they're very shy, and that's something that I, I fear for them. Like having to overcome for their entire life. So watching them be able to communicate online with people they don't know has actually been uh, a really big thing for them, and it's something I'm really encouraging. That's awesome, man, Nick. Yeah, I could relate to that. Like being. Uh, an introvert at one point in time in my life and then getting into high school and partying and all that stuff and then becoming an extrovert and then not wanting to do the partying but still be social and it was kind of a perfect just fit right into place with gaming like I can I feel like I can talk to just about anyone you know what I mean it's a lot of fun um, you just treat them like you would want to be treated talk to someone like you'd like to be talked to and it's like Gary said it's really helped me um, realize the importance of um, teamwork, but not only teamwork, but um, the importance of like a sense of community, a place that you belong and stuff like that too. I think it, it speaks volumes for what games are doing right now with these uh, games like Destiny and Overwatch and encouraging teamwork. And it feels really good. I mean, like you accomplish something really awesome in a game with a group of people that you enjoy playing with and you guys feel really good as a group afterwards, you know, like whether it's going flawless or beating a raid or, <clears throat> and I think it just teaches you, like Gary said, just life skills, people skills, you know, that sort I mean, of I stuff. I kind of feel like, again, working in um, like a corporate business environment, these, you could go on these like, um, what they call like working um, relief days where, you know, you go and you do a team building exercise and they move you all to a fucking, um, like climbing wall and you've all got to help each other get up the climbing wall or do shit like that I feel like they could save a lot of money on corporate escape days just by getting a load of people and making them do an LFG destiny raid because that's like the biggest team building exercise that you ever do like bring six randoms together and they've got to solve a series or sequence of puzzles in a raid and you know work and communicate and understand how to work together and do that you know that's like you know, when they've got to pass the bucket of water across the obstacles without spilling any, that's, that's like the digital version of that shit. That's the next evolution of it. And that's something that you, you know, if you, if you face LFG on destiny, you're doing that on a, on a daily basis or on a raid by raid basis. Yeah. And that's, that's something that's it's super impressive to me. It's, it's amazing to me, you know, that something you, you, in your mind, you think it carries little weight, but there are other people who could be watching the, uh, the military website under the radar reported in 2013 that they were using six video games. I'm just going to talk about one or two of them to train their soldiers for actual combat. One was, well, I can relate uh, to this beastly. Uh, I feel like I've learned a lot about combat from video games. I am now proficient in firefights from playing games such as call of duty, uh, golden eye and destiny. I can kick pretty much anybody's ass ever since uh, playing street fighter two. Uh, I'm an expert race car driver ever since beating uh, Gran Turismo 1 and 2. I mean, I really perfected my skills there. It's funny that you bring that up, right? I, uh, am, one of the I am not only qualified to design a <laughs> rocket, but also to pilot it thanks to Kerbal <laughs> Space Program. Um, Brilliant. I mean, really, at this point, I'm not <laughs> sure there's anything I'm not qualified to do. Well, I mean, after playing, the, <laughs> after, playing the, um, after playing The Witcher 3, he's pretty competent at the fucking as well. I mean, oh, Geralt taught yeah. him a thing or two there. My wife will disagree with that strongly. <laughs> 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 but 
look on his face. The love machine. That is, that is I mean, the be- Beastly, for sure, playing The Last of Us that long, I think that helped him with the squirrel hunting, definitely, there, you know, oh, foraging yeah. out there. And... Totally. I mean, yeah, how, would you know? right how would Just you know? How would you know? Uh, someone in our comment section, uh, Tony Costa said Nissan hired some drivers for their race team by scouting drivers from Gran Turismo. Yeah, I told you I I'm mean, an expert race driver. I am an expert. Uh, I'm I, sure you are, Briar. I'm <laughs> sure. You, I'm sure. Actually, I saw you driving on the side of a fucking mountain, so you might be right. <laughs> uh, that was some scary shit. I'm sorry, but that was pretty pretty uh, heart racing when I watched you do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, to me, that was an interesting topic, and, and it, this stuff does happen. Uh, I've I've known for years that the army has actually used VR and different types of video games to get their soldiers ready for the battlefield. And I mean, the more and more the technology moves, the better they're able to simulate things. And yeah. that goes from being on the battlefield to being in a, a car, simulators for space. They're using video game technology to teach people real world skills all the time. And I think that it'll come to a point in the future where it's, it'll be a one-to-one comparison. And I think that's pretty cool. Well, I mean, VR if... for surgery before they do surgery on kids with certain ailments so that they can get a better understanding of what they're going in for. Or maybe a doctor who's never performed surgery before. It's his first time. Oh, wow. They're actually using VR for that stuff. Now, I actually heard that on um, Spotify during a commercial. They were talking about it. I thought it was super interesting. Um, the military is also used, what was it called? Battle Tanks? It was like an old 80s arcade vector graphics. They yeah. used to use that. And then that led to the whole myth of Polybius and that there was like the whole mind control machine, uh, video game machine. That's a completely different topic. But yeah. it kind of led into myth. that because because they did... They did have the federal seal on the uh, the federal seal when you booted up the game, so that they had used that tanks uh, arcade machine for training. Yeah, I mean, I heard Polybius was used to turn the frogs gay, but that's just an urban rumor. <clears throat> According to Alex Jones, hundred <laughs> percent. They also used full spectrum warrior on Xbox. They used uh, tactical Iraqi on PC. There you go, Gary. Tactical Iraqi. Uh, yeah, what they used. Name? America's oh, Army on PC and Xbox and virtual battle space uh, for training in the Army. So Wait, it's been I'm seeing going it, on for a long time. Let's just pause the podcast. Is Tactical Iraqi on Steam? Because that's on my wish list right now. <laughs> Find out. It might be. Tactical Iraqi. Hey, you got to watch out, man. That that jihad might come through and get you, Gary. <laughs> so tactical. Shit. Talking about um, putting things on my wish list, the next topic is um, actually it's not the next topic, is it? I've I've jumped straight ahead onto um, to something. Maybe we should make it the next topic and then come back to destiny. Sure. Um, I had a bit of PC troubles this week, actually. Yes. Um, I was meant to be meant to be doing a raid, and um, Gary you know, just... downloaded a virus <laughs> and fucked everything, <laughs> prevented them from doing the raid with us. So I wake right. up. All right, here's the story. Everyone. Tell us, Willie. Tell us what happened. Gather closely. <clears throat> I wake up on, uh, you know, we get done doing trials on Friday, and Gary's like, hey, I still haven't done a raid completion yet. I've jumped in. I have yet to do it, and I really need to do it on PC. I'd like to get that under my belt. Let's get a team together. To which Briar says, no problem. We can get a team together. We can get this done, no problem, in a couple hours. Let's set a time. We set a time. I wake up Saturday excited to do this raid. Mm, excited. <clears throat> I wake up early. I woke up so early. It was the first first thought into my mind when I woke up. Was, raid day. Can't wait. It was raid day. And, uh, you know, I'm getting in. I'm getting my coffee. I'm chilling. I'm, I'm booting up the PC. And I'm like, yo, we, you know, what's good? We still on for the raid today? Briar's like, absolutely. And Gary breaks the news that his computer uh, basically took a shit on him. So we're here to guess what Gary downloaded that made him crash his PC right. that made him ultimately fuck the raid, I which think, never I happened. I think we all, we all have had an insight into Gary's perversions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my and inner I, demons, my sinful, <laughs> my sinful nature. And I think it'd be fun to try and guess what Gary downloaded. <laughs> that was... I mean, frankly, a step above what he normally is downloading. <laughs> we went into some shady territory here. That got um, him a virus. So I'm going to uh, be honest with you. It was. We're not going to no, spoil no, the don't surprise. Don't tell for us. Everyone. Don't tell us. Oh. We want to guess. We're, you can tell us. It ruins closest. the illusion. I'm going yeah. to give you some some guiding clues that it, it was. It wasn't available on the 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 the, the light net. It was definitely on the dark net <laughs> of, uh, of torrents. 
Um, so if you step into the the dark web of torrents, you you're kind of hitting uh, slightly warmer to home there. But no, I'm I I, I again I'm gonna sort of talk talk through my process there. I turned it um I turned the computer off, thinking maybe we just need to restart this computer. When I turned it back on, my God. Um, I have not seen spyware or advertisements for Russian brides in that many places on my computer in a long time. Um, I couldn't search a video without getting numerous webcams come up. I had a charming Nigerian chap ask me about um, a bank account that he was looking to send money to from his dead uncle. It was it was a traumatic afternoon, I must say. But um, mm. what have we got so far here? People looking at things. Well, I think we've... I think we've kind of pinpointed where it came from. If you're getting <laughs> Russian mail order brides, I think Mother Russia is to blame for this one. Did you download some like some sort of smutty version of Tetris or something? Like, <laughs> I know the title of of the application that was downloaded, and uh, that's all I'm going to say because uh, I know Gary. Gary has privately sent me, you know, hey Beastly, check out this. This looks pretty cool to buy. I'll look at it, smile, throw up slightly in my mouth, then buy it. Okay, so. <laughs> This is the title of the software I believe that Gary installed. Uh-huh. Alien Power Bottom Elitist <laughs> Hentai. Ooh, that, I that's... Boy, that sounds right up Gary's alley. Mm. <laughs> it sure I mean, does. <laughs> they sound like the sort of tags that I look for in a search. They do definitely <laughs> feature. I plugged Absolutely. it in. It checks out. Nine out of ten of those results are a match I mean, for Gary. It was, <laughs> it, it was a piece of software that was actually bundled in the... Um, it was bundled in the Humble Bundle Honey, Honeycam Sakura Bundle, um, which was uh, well, to bear in mind actually two of those games were banned from Twitch, um, which shows just just how uh, fun they were. Um, <laughs> Shit. But yeah, the when I was actually um, wait, wait, I, go haven't, on... I haven't guessed yet. I haven't given my guess okay, yet. Yeah, yeah, he's given us yeah. truth. We want we want the fantasy. I think that Gary was um, actually downloading a pirated copy of Excel. I, I think it was an uh, innocuous piece of software. The reason, however, that he was downloading Excel <laughs> is he was trying to create a spreadsheet of all of the panty snapping simulators available for the PS Vita <laughs> and their availability on Amazon or Gumtree or wherever your, your favorite online shop may be uh, because he really wants to get that complete collection. And unfortunately, you know, it wasn't the actual panty software that got him. It was the seemingly easy purchase that he could have made of Excel, but unfortunately his his well-known and uh, explicit fear and hatred for Microsoft sent him to the dark web to get a <laughs> pirated copy of Excel so he could make his panty dropping or panty snapping spreadsheet. I think you're onto something Excel there. But... What's, what's scary with Briar's <laughs> fantasy is that he's half right, which is even more concerning. <laughs> I'm going to see this um, spreadsheet. Um, I, real do, quick, I do though, have, I, I do think have we've, such, um, we've left out an important medium here. Yeah. Hugo Rune, I think please. Hugo Rain fucking you, nailed Hugo it Rune here, is right. Dude. <laughs> you were trying to get a Yobo emulator, and it fucked you. Yes. That's what it is. That's Truth. what it's got to be right there. <laughs> yes. I I could have, you could have borrowed emulator. mine, Gary. He didn't want to ask you. Could you imagine the shame of him? He'd be like a he'd be like a lost cat in the rain on your door. Don't make asking to this that shit. Thing. Can we can we just clarify here? How would I get a Yobo? A Yobo is a SNES emulator. So would I just have to Skype Beastly and watch him playing it? That's a Yobo emulator. Isn't it? You just wanted a taste. You wanted. Yeah. You were you were feeling vulnerable. You were feeling vulnerable. None of us were around because of the time difference, and you went to the closest, most comforting thing. Even if it was shameful, the dark you web. wanted some Yobo. <laughs> that hot Yobo action. Is there mm-hmm. videos? He was looking up uh, naked women in Yobo. <laughs> yeah, Yobo pinups. Alien <laughs> power <laughs> bottom <laughs> elitist in time. All Amateur. right, Gary, spill the beans. What was it? <laughs> Amateur Yobo. Um, no, for me, it was... Um... I like the amateur because you can see the, the 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 you know the passion in their eyes. They're not doing it for the money. They're doing it for the love for the community. Um, for me, it's it was it was far more. I already have the spreadsheet talking about your half truth there. For me, I do have a um a Sakura wish list, which is all the games that are in the Sakura Blossom kind of general 
um, category, which I do update. I have a spreadsheet that has multiple genres that I look at and things that I want that aren't on Steam, because obviously I've got a Steam wish list for that. So that's being said. Talking about that sort of um, game series as well, Semran Kagura, if you are on the Japanese Switch store, Semran Kagura has put on um, a weird high school dating sim, which mostly involves just a lot of spanking cutscenes. Uh, it's not being localised into English, which is a fucking crime. Um, but if you are willing to just press A through all the Japanese bits, you get some cheap smut on your Vita, and I believe there's a demo available. So, uh, not Vita, Switch. Switch. <coughs> Japanese store. You're anyway. a freaky ass dude, man. Let me just tell you this, Gary. You look so goddamn innocent. You look the same age as your son. And I look at this young ass dude. I'm like, this guy it looks like he sits, spends all his time in a library reading books. All you think about is smacking asses and snapping panties, man. <laughs> Shit. That's Pretty much books. They're, they're so, it's literature. It's just smutty literature. That's all. Yeah. There's um there's a, an interesting thing, Galgun, um, which you know I'm a, a strong proponent of. I have yes. multiple editions Coming of that on switch. multiple platforms. I, I wish it was. I wish it was. Actually, there is a Galgun sequel coming to the Switch, um, but that's not till later in the year. Back to the point at hand, Galgun for the PC, um, there is a DLC piece. Now, the game itself is only like $3 to buy, but there is a nudity DLC official sold through Steam, um, which is $65. $65. For these DLCs. You're selling that ass, that. Gary. You, you want to see the ass? You're going to have to pay, Gary. When did you buy it? So I, I didn't buy it. I... <laughs> Not yet. I may it. have. He looking right, back I'm, so his fiance don't hear him say I already bought it. I may have. Uh, I may have somewhat tried to acquire that. Anyway, <laughs> everything was going well, but I thought this is unusual. Why has it come with an installer? Okay, it's come with an installer. Click next. Let's look at an. Uh, you know, we can do an express installation or a custom installation. I think it's best to do custom installation here. Uh, that was the first alarm bell when I was like. Auto search, vid square, promo plus, ad wise. And I was like, hmm, I don't want to install these, but I will still trust this installer because, you know, I've, I've got rid of. <laughs> I've got rid Blinded of. Blinded by things. the boobies. That's what it was. Oh, You're yeah. like, I want to see these girls naked. Blinded even if I risk my computer. So I've got rid of all the bloatware. So obviously, they, you know, the people on, on this dark website that give me this installer, they wouldn't leave me astray. You know, they wouldn't. They wouldn't do that no. to me. Click next, no. click install, oh. click finish. Um, yeah, next thing I know, my default web browser is something different. I've got all these strange Russian ladies talking to me. I've got the Nigerian chap on my desktop. Um, and I, I didn't get to see the Galgun DLC. So um, that's something else I'm asking for your viewers. If you want to, um, you know, make make my Thanksgiving and my early Christmas, please donate that. Steam gift me the DLC for Galgun. Um, <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> I have too much shame to buy it myself. But if someone gives it to me, it's rude not to look at it. So <laughs> that was the story of... Gary's PC, and um, my fingers are still burnt, but I am still tempted to try to acquire it. I've got to be honest, I've not learnt my lesson. That's like, Jeez, Gary. do it on the Mac. Like walk, just do it on the around, Mac. Yeah, just get it on the Mac. It's much safer. Um, the uh, It's like walking around the woods and finding an open bag of potato chips and taking a bite of one or two, in my opinion. That's, yeah, that's risky business, that's for sure. That's risky. Oh, poor, poor it was it, it was just a, a, a strange dark rabbit hole to go down which again i couldn't give you guys the full story i definitely had to tell you that there was a virus there um just not where i acquired it, it but um, pc std is what it was <laughs> shit i just so I technically so technically it kind of was hentai-esque so briar was right right <laughs> i find it extortionate that a game that is currently eight dollars on steam for the game has got a Eighty dollar DLC for the pheromone Z item, which makes clothing yeah, I'm invisible. I'm looking at it right now. I'm sorry, guys. I'm looking. It's right a true now. story. I'm just, I'm just, it's, yeah, it's I'm looking at it right there with you. Shit. I need to do it's, some research. Eighty percent off. Maybe I should buy Galgo. Eighty percent off for the game. It's... But if you want the nudity, you have to pay eighty dollars additional. I'm buying that shit and breaking my computer. It's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. It's the the, the 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 epitome of pay to win. I'm not happy. What are you winning, Gary? What are you winning? I just have to know. What what have you won at the end of your completion? I don't know what you've won, but you've lost all self-respect you ever had. I mean, <laughs> I'm looking at this game right now. It is the most perverted thing I've it ever is, seen in my life. I can't. I got wait, three wait. daughters. I can't even play this shit. That's banned off of Twitch. Is that, is that true? Is that that, that game is banned off Twitch? Oh, I guarantee. No, it. no, this one isn't banned off of it, Twitch. Galgun but the ones is that on came Twitch. with it were Galgun's not as bad as Honey comes Honey 
Honey Cam Studio. And, Why do you say uh, gum? <laughs> It, there is. It's effectively you're managing a cam girl industry. It's like a football manager or like soccer manager, but it, with cam girls. Um, that was a good game. It was a good game. Um, oh my god! Or house party as well. That was fun. That wasn't. That was. That was also interesting. Gary, you you's a freak. I'm gonna say it like I'm from the hood. You's a freak. Uh, you you like that shit, man? He looks so innocent. You know. You, and, and throughout the history, it's always the guys who look so, you know, respectable. Better than serial killer. Deviant. Listen to this <laughs> fellow. He's a deviant. Yeah, I, I, was, I was wanting to take Gary home to mom, but not after this. Not now. This when they're yeah, when they're interviewing met... the neighbors after somebody gets caught for being a serial killer, you never hear he him say, "Oh yeah, I mean, we thought for sure he was a serial killer." Wait. Did you see him? <laughs> I mean, look at the fucking guy. He looks <laughs> exactly like Charles Manson. He oh, was so, so he's, sweet. He had a little he's son. So sweet. He's quiet. He was a nice guy. I think I think it's about time that we once more visited this dark rabbit hole of um, <laughs> this is Galgun Double Piece Collector's Edition. Um, this is something. This is actually I don't own a PlayStation Four anymore, but I still own this Collector's Edition. Um, now this this itself is that like relatively... the leg? Is that like the leg lamp from a Christmas story? You get like your wife's jealous and you got to hide it from her. That that Collector's Edition. <laughs> no, yeah. um, it actually. <laughs> As you can see, it's a, it's a large box. It's it's obviously relatively, you know, well spacious and airy. Uh, but one of the key collector's items that it has, um, as as is evidenced here, is um, it's a screen cleaner. Uh, it just happens to be in the the shape of um, Japanese schoolgirls' panties. I I didn't invent Gary, it. I, I got just... one question. How did you reseal that plastic wrap? Yeah, they look they look well used. They look well used. I was gonna say the same thing. How'd you reseal them, Gary? Are they supposed oh. to be all stretched out like that? It's it's a, it's an art form. Again, you have to conceal your track somehow. Damn! Uh, I I gotta make a confession, guys. I am right now buying Gal Gun. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I we're mean, not I'm, sponsored I'm, I'm, by them, but we probably should be with the amount we talk ad, about. Purchase for right. myself, ad as a gift. My ass. This is for me, and I'm only buying it on my PC because my PC I mean, is tucked away in a the corner. There's, there's and all my sorts children... of, of creative illustrations in the guidebook, as you can tell here. It's it's pretty pretty good. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a great game. The plot is incredible. I'm sure it is, and that's what you call a well, plot. I'm sure it's a real it's a real page turner. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm sure it. <laughs> if you call it, that's what you call a plot. I was reaching for the tissues more than once. <laughs> very, very emotional story. It was, it was tears, tears. That's not the way I took that at all. It's up to you how you take it. Uh, <laughs> That's right, Gary. Uh, you something else, brother. <laughs> we, we need to get the hell off this topic. Yeah, what's we next? do. What's next? So the next topic is something that um, is a bit more serious. Destiny's XP rigged system, Briar. Do you want to talk to us about uh, how Destiny have been yeah, robbing us blind for months? I kind of don't want to anymore. I was having so much fun, and now we're just gonna we're just gonna you drop gotta take it. it. <laughs> drop we down. have to. All right. So uh, this week, uh, I, actually, I mean, this has been going on for some weeks. Reddit has been kind of investigating that XP gains seem to slow down the faster you acquired XP in Destiny Two, and uh, this was concerning. Because uh, by getting XP, you can also earn Bright Engrams, which are also purchasable with real money in-game. Um, and the deal here is that when you're doing things that give you XP at a relatively slow rate, like uh, Crucible or Raids, um, your XP, you know, whatever it displays for a number, is actually how much XP you're getting. But when you're doing activities that will give you XP at a very fast rate, like public events... Um, your XP, there's an algorithm in place, or there was an algorithm in place that would actually slow down how much XP you were getting. But the number that displayed on the screen would actually remain stationary. It would always be the same number for completing a public event. But the actual amount rewarded would be less and less, and it would drop down to 4% of the number awarded. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of investigation was getting done on this on Reddit. Uh, and finally, some... Uh, some larger gaming websites uh, ended up picking up on this, which prompted, it seemingly prompted a response from Bungie, and Bungie kind of tore it out of the game. And they, you know, they kind of gave one of those, you know, hey, uh, you know, we're as upset about this as you are. It's 
it's out immediately. But, I mean, you guys put it in, so don't bullshit us, you know? Like, it, it completely one of those things. And it brings into a lot of questions. You know, first of all, you know, would they have kept doing it if they'd gotten away with it? I think uh, the answer is obvious. They would have kept doing it uh, because it ends up making them money, right? Is the, the fewer free packages you get, especially toward the end of a DLC, the more likely you are to buy some of those bright engrams to try and get those things that are going away. Mm -hmm. um, things like emotes, ships, sparrows, uh, ghost shells. Uh, even some of the special armor. Um, and then, you know, so that all ties into microtransactions and just, you know, increases your desire to go ahead and buy the microtransactions. And, you know, in a way, it's also kind of seeding, constantly seeding to you the fact that there are microtransactions, right? Every time you get a bright anger room, you go and open it, you don't get the thing you want. It's another temptation to go in and buy more Bright Engrams mm -hmm. to get the thing you want, right? So every time you get one, it's a little bit of a temptation. And then there's also things that you actually get in Bright Engrams called Fire Team Medallions that are supposed to give you extra XP when you when you pop them with a Fire Team that in this algorithm were basically seemingly worthless. And there was this whole Pop Tarts promotion where they were selling Pop Tarts with the expectation that if you bought pop tarts you used the code in game that you would get double xp which was then being throttled by this algorithm inside destiny 2 oh that's so fucked isn't that fucked so yeah. we're getting double the throttled xp basically. Yeah. <laughs> so they um, weren't the, the xp i guess before we get into talking about our thoughts on the that part there the the pop tarts and the fire team medallions they weren't actually lying, were they? It's just whether or not the value of them was where they said they were. You're still getting double the XP. Correct. But the double the XP of the whatever. The much amount. lower rate. The throttled. Yeah. yeah, you're getting double throttled. But like the uh, before, like going back to the fire team medallion, it also does supposedly give you increased chance of loot drops. I don't mm -hmm. know Exotics. how fucked. I don't know how fucked works. that is, but like I've definitely noticed that we, when me and somebody else in my fire team has got one popped. You generally seem to see more legendaries and exotics and things like that. Um, but yeah, this this kind of it's kind of burnt my ass a little bit because uh, I mean I definitely invested into the whole pop tarts thing, like anything with destiny on it. Like mm -hmm. I was all about it. Um, but the underlining issue here is that when the current in the current state of Destiny Two, Eververse is the end game right now. And that's the closest thing to an end game we have. Sure, you could say that you can grind things from Ikora's meditations and get that set of armor, or you could go get the planetary sets or something. But realistically, you know, you're not getting any bit of a more benefit other than end game fashion. You know, it's kind of what we're playing right now, whether it's through uh, ornaments um, for your exotics or ships or ghosts. They really don't give you a whole lot of boost yeah yeah there's a set of armor in there and stuff but it's when it's the end game and this is the only thing that we have to grind for and you're slowing our progression down and then you're a lot of this stuff is going to be going away like you're not going to be able to get the salt emo or the um spicy ramen come season two I would kind of like to get as much XP as I've invested my time into. Um, I've never heard of another game doing this. I could be wrong. I'm sure other games have done it. Maybe this is mm -hmm. one of the first times I've heard of people getting caught doing it. Yeah, but caught. Yeah. it left me, it kind of burned my ass a little bit. But you know what? Kudos for them for stepping up and saying, yeah, we'll, we'll change it. You clearly don't like it. We'll change it. I'm not making excuses for them. I'm not saying that it's right. I'm just saying, how many people do you know that fuck up and actually apologize for it and fix it? Uh, I mean, this is the thing. Transparency is what matters most in these type of situations. And if they were throttling your progression and your experience, that's something that needed to be known from jump. You know, it's like if you have an internet service provider and you find out you're getting throttled when it's not in your agreement at all. And then you find out through a third party and then they apologize. That apology is only there because they got caught. Did they, they should really have done apologize? It. I mean, to me, the the whole thing seemed like 
hey guys, we're totally on your side. <laughs> we hate this shit too. Dude, yeah. <laughs> you know, and we're we're changing it right now because we're man. fucking Fuck awesome, man. Yeah. Maybe you're right. Maybe it wasn't. You know, you're right. It, it wasn't a direct apology, but the fact that they acknowledged it, I guess, is more or less what I'm looking for. But I mean, like, it's it is what it is. The important thing is is that, or I'm sorry, the the underlying issue is it was just awful fucking timing, as well. Now, yeah. had when the game come out and you logged into the game and it said, hey earn XP with your friends and increase your level through this activity. But if you do too many of these activities, we're going to throttle your XP. It probably wouldn't have been an issue had there been some sort of little underlining text right underneath the public event or something, mm -hmm. but there wasn't. And I don't know. I think people justifiably have every right to be pissed about it, but it's just super bad mm -hmm. timing with, with all the shit that's been going on and all the, the think... negativity that's been stirring and, I think throttle as well is a misleading word here. Um, if you look at it, I think the better word to use is normalized um, because the destiny model was a normalization of your XP flow over a given period. It wasn't a throttling. So if you did a certain activity that accelerated you above the normalized level, you would throttle down. If you were doing things like crucible, which gave you very little XP over time, it would be buffed up to the level that you should be. And then the medallions would impact that up or down. So, you know, it wasn't just a, a wholesale throttle. You know, if you were doing a lot of Crucible, it would throttle your XP. No, if you were doing Crucible all day, you were significantly better off pre-patch than you are now post-patch. What this has done now is meant that if you want to farm XP, you have to do certain activities that can be repeated quickly to accelerate above the XP curve. If you're now exclusively raiding and Crucible, you will see significantly, I mean, we're talking very significantly less packages than you had previously before because you're now not benefiting from that buff. So it's kind of like it's half of one and six, dozen, you know, uh, sorry, six of one, half a dozen the other. I agree that there should have been transparency to say Destiny employs a normalized XP system and that these packages will only give you a maximum of 100% more than whatever the normalized XP is over a given hour or whatever it was. Um, but, you know, part of me thinks now that our scrutiny over this model and what it is has led to the fact that the game is now even less fun um, or less rewarding, sorry, I should say, for people that don't just grind public events all day, which well, is where the issue was. Ultimately, Gary, it's going to make people who play this game feel less like grinding or, or feel like there's a possibility that they could be getting cheated in some other way because of the lack of transparency. And I still stand by the term throttling because if you pop a fire team medallion or you do something else you buy a thousand pop tarts like wilson and and, and it's supposed to get you a certain amount of uh experience yeah and, and then all of a sudden that's not down to the normalization level it's still throttled you don't get what what you were promised or what you were supposed to get when you pop these medallions if you get exp too fast so i do still see it as a throttling issue you're normalizing throttling and making it normalization but they actually took away what gamers were working hard for. That's the grind that you love, you know, and suddenly, you know, you're out there grinding for many, many hours and you realize that what you got probably isn't what you deserve. It'll make people like me and probably tons of other players less likely to grind as hard until they actually have solid proof that there's actual transparency and that the developers are only up enough when it, when it comes to you putting your time in on their game. Having that number pop up too, like when you complete something and it not be inaccurate, I think is it's misleading and it feels shitty. Yeah. No, I hear you. I just think it's limited the ways in which people can progress in the game now. Because if I'm a certain player that does not enjoy the given XP grind play style, I've been effectively limited now or nerfed on the amount of experience that I get. So you and me playing Trials of the Nine when we do an Iron Banner, we may not even see a bright Ingram anymore from playing that. It, it's just how it is now because of how slow That's the XP gain is. That's interesting. It's, you know, because it was like the, someone said in the chat there, the, the, if you read the full Reddit article, they, they evidenced that Crucible matches were getting 120% XP bonus. So you were earning 120% more XP in a Crucible game um, than you would have in, you know, in standard uh, if you'd gone to a, a public event just because it was taking you so much longer to get that XP um, sort of delivered. So yeah, I mean, it, it, it's benefiting us in some ways, and it's not in the in the other. Um, you know, now unless I am a public event grinder, I am going to see less bright engrams. And 
whether we think Bungie's right or not, or it was shitty presentation, um, I think the normalization thing was a good thing for someone who plays the game in a, in a variety of ways. I can't, I can't agree with that. Uh, it's just because it, it seems so misleading. The fact that they were popping a number out there that wasn't, it didn't actually correspond to what you were receiving. Um, the fact that as soon as it, you know, like it, it started making the rounds in the press, they immediately had it ready to be changed. We're talking about a company that mm-hmm. takes months or years to change, change things, things about their game. But as soon as this thing hit the newswire, they're like, it was, it was like a f- switch with somebody's finger waiting for people to figure it out. And they're just like, flip. <laughs> yeah, okay, you tell the truth, though. You, you tell the us. truth, man. Oh, we're sorry. <laughs> yeah. Had him a gunpoint. Absolutely true, man. <laughs> like, literally. Hey, like, but do you think they're going to sell more or less microtransactions now? Because if you physically can't get bright engrams without doing public events do you think some people are just going to think oh fuck it i'll buy it now because i'm I'm, i never see a bright engram i i think the difference between 120 percent and 100 percent is a lot less than the difference between four percent and 100 percent yeah it's a fair point that's a fair i was just trying to counterbalance it in the fact that it wasn't if it was exclusively throttled i'd I'd probably be as harsh as, as you guys have been or as critical. Man, you better get off that devil's advocate bullshit and join the Revolver <laughs> team. This shit ain't cool. I like <laughs> slurping at the, the bungee bag sometimes. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, I'm not being an apologist for them. I'm just saying that oh, there, was sure. a, there was some layers to this conversation. Um, I think the response to it was incorrect. Um, I think it raised a lot of questions. You know, there's no excuse in that, but we're beating a dead horse there. I just think if you look at the actual system that they've implemented, I don't think it was as draconian. I feel like there was a spreadsheet that was circulated between Activision and Bungie where they said, okay, what's an acceptable level of time versus reward? So if we say that the average person or, you know, any player, not the average player, but any player can earn a bright engram over X amount of hours um, and we can give them one for free. Well, this is how much we value the purchase of silver, and it just gave them a very clean way to do that algorithm or that that pricing structure because they was, could quantify the exact. Though. That's hours. what that's what I think yeah. pisses everybody off is that they it was this like secret little algorithm and they they weren't clear and upfront about it and then they had things like the pop tart promotion and the fire team medallion and uh, Jason in chat is talking about the clarion call which we just had which was an event that was supposed to be all about double XP and you know. You realize you realize that you were getting you know twenty percent of the XP that was popping up on screen, or you know even forty percent or half of the XP, mm-hmm. and it, down to four percent. Like it just that sucks, it's, yeah. man. It just feels shitty. And then and to know that those bright engrams, you know, like if you're not getting what you want, you can just go buy those bright engrams. Man, that feels really rough. That feels really rough. I mean, the, that thing trust. That the fact the that most... it was hidden just feels so nasty. It's it's that trust, bro, and it's like any relationship. If you're in a relationship with somebody and they do something that's that screws you over, you'll always be looking at them out of the corner of your eye, wondering if they're ever going to do that again because you know they're capable of doing it. Like, and I can and tell this you, kind 100% of hundred percent of the time, I am honest with my wife. One hundred percent of the time, no doubt about it, because she listens to this show. <laughs> it's a good reason and and, and while you say that i second that motion 100 percent transparency with my wife i've never lied to her in my entire I life think, i think i think you missed a trick there you could have said 99 percent of the time but she's now got to guess that one percent you know just leave that shadow at that is it today no is it tomorrow who knows it's gonna happen so keep one, out on it. Keep one out of 100 one out of 100 i don't want I that this. game i don't want that game in my life <laughs> Do you, do you guys the, think that this would be as big of a deal as it is if we had a lot more shit to do and a lot more stuff to go after? Do you think if like, of course if not. Bright engrams were like just a, a little seasoning of extra loot that you could obtain. If we had strike specific loot, if we had uh, other ways other than tokens to turn in, you know, all, all these other activities that reward individual we had sparrows loot. for raid rewards. And, do you think we would be making as big of a deal out of this? Because right now. All of that shit is most I, of what we want is in those bright engrams as far as cosmetic. It's really the only thing left to grind for. It just for. feels so shitty. You know, and, you know, as a fan of the game, I want to be a fan of the people making it too. For sure. And when I hear them doing something like this, it just, man, it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth, man. It's hard to be a fan of the that. people who put a system in place like this. It's hard. For sure. I, th- 
I think the other distinction that that kind of le- leans me more onto the side of what you guys are saying is the system only kicks in once you hit 20. So the clarion call and everything else works right the way up to 20. So when you're actually progressing in and not getting bright Ingram, so you're just getting level ups, it, there's no there's no normalization. You can do what you want when you want. You can do public events and every three you get a level. It only happens after you hit 20. So, you know, take that what you may. You, you'd think if there was a, a normalization system, it would be consistent for all levels, for all activities, if you want to level through Crucible, etc. But no, if you level in Crucible, you'll be playing like 15, 20 games for a level up. You know, you could do three public events and, and get a level right the way from one through 20. So Let's get off of this topic. It's depressing. It's like, it's it like is. finding out your father's an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Finding out he's not your father. Mm. <laughs> who really made Destiny 2? It's not who you thought. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> and it was EA was all along. It was EA all along. <laughs> Surprise, motherfuckers! <laughs> Andrew Andrew Wilson just comes out from behind the curtain with his little snake lips. That's it. Amazing, fantastic. <laughs> oh shit! That's great. Well, let's get on. Let's get on something maybe a little bit more lighter here. Um, yeah. You know, coming off the heels of Thanksgiving, we're full. Mm. But most importantly, we're thankful. Mm-hmm. So whether it be gaming, you know, we, we, it doesn't have to be limited to just gaming. You know, whatever. What are some of the things in in life or gaming? that you guys are most thankful for you know we you know we can obviously we're thankful for our wives we're thankful for our families and all that great stuff everyone knows that we we talked about that thursday so i guess for me something that i'm probably going to take this one from gary but i'm thankful for the option lately to go to pc gaming man like it's it's completely opened up my eyes to this uh, the just how different the games feel, how they could be played, and how much more enjoyable it is to me personally. I know it's not for everyone, but for me, PC gaming is is a huge start. You Sorry, know what, Gary, Wilson, I, just took yours. I, I love I love that man. Uh, Wilson puts it in a way that you know it doesn't offend me at all. It just makes me smile because I look and I see the glee in his eyes. I know he's yeah. telling the truth. He's not snubbing me. I love it. So the Gary, exact opposite of Gary I, is what. Can you're I, absolutely. Can I ask absolutely. Gary to say the same answer that Wilson just gave? Just, just put it in your How would you word it? Scary. Well, I'm thankful for PC gaming because it kind of like, it weeds out the riffraff from your community. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it, it's kind of that thing there. It's, it's Like for me, I actually think we should take it one step further with the matchmaker. I've said on Destiny, we shouldn't, on the LFG system, we should have little ticks for, you know, does have SSD, is using <laughs> Coffee Lake or above processor, you know, these sorts of things that we need. I don't want you coming in and adding 15 seconds to my load time just because you've not bothered to upgrade your system. I've got to wa- you're inconveniencing me. I've got to wait for you to load into orbit. Great. Well, I'm thankful Gary. for Gary. I am <laughs> thankful for Wilson, and I am thankful for Beasley. Beasley, I've known you for, is it five years now? Yeah. And you weren't. You almost didn't make it to the show today, and I was, I was upset. I was like, oh, no, we're going to lose Beasley. Beasley is an integral part of my Sunday. I have known you for five years now, and I value our relationship greatly. And I, I am you, thankful man. for that. Wilson, I Wilson and Gary both, man, is the, when we play games together, I just have so much fucking fun. And I'm really thankful for that because we get in there and we have a good time. Sometimes we have serious discussions like when we were talking about the, you know, the last topic on Friday. Sometimes we're talking uh, uh, about fucking complete random bullshit like like fucking chili cones, you know, like it's just, it's completely random, but I, I value all three of your friendship greatly. And the fact that we've got this podcast going and we, we have a chance to hang out like a scheduled time to hang out every Sunday evening is awesome. Uh, and when we get to play games together, like that's awesome too. So it's cheesy, but I'm, and I could have come up with something funny, but I wanted to be real here. I'm thankful for you guys. Like this has been a wonderful ride so far. Well, well, man, back at you. But don't forget that we also talked about Joey from Full House and how, remember how every song was about Joey every from Full House? About Joey from Full House. <laughs> and um, I think we, we we also spent around 10 minutes on the band Silk. Uh, we discussed the members, <laughs> Big G, Silk Lil G, and how <laughs> they got their we names. Yeah. John John. History, man. I feel and so close. Gary. And John John. John John. I miss Silk this conversation. So I don't know if you knew that. They uh-huh. did. They also they they're still touring. They um they they were mainly popular with the song "Freak Me," but uh, I think their latest song in twenty sixteen, which, this which is didn't like hit the Billboard, Black Mirror. it didn't hit the Billboard charts. Yes. It was like um I wish you'd like me or something along the lines of of that nature. <laughs> oh, which is happening right good. now. Yeah. 
<laughs> Gary, so, you're not supposed to know this shit, man. Damn, you, just, you ain't supposed to know. Show my knowledge of music. This is offensive. Right. No, I'm sorry. That you is know, a microaggression. I, my, my bad, Gary. You look like a white guy. I forgot your 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 you have Spanish roots. Word. What, what the Latino hate. <laughs> now let um. me just say this real quick, man. Um, I'm I'm thankful for everything that's happened in my life, man. Um, Wilson, I've known you now for goddamn what episode is this? Like five six months consistently. And uh, you you become fast one of the best people I know. I'm I'm a loner. That's you guys great. might not know that. Uh, I don't have friends who fuck with me in real life because I keep people away. I don't like people coming here and using my shit. Get your Dorito dust off my PlayStation controller. Get the hell out of here. So this this podcast has has been very special to me, Gary. Uh, I know I give you a lot of shit, man. You're one of the most charismatic, funny people I've ever known. Uh, you're a hell of a person. A great father, uh, and uh, you know you're a PC elitist, but you know nobody's perfect. Briar, you know you said the same thing to me that I was going to say to you. God, it's been so many years of us shooting the shit, and I wouldn't miss it for my life. I love this this show. I love Revolver. It is the best podcast I've ever been on. Did he just uh, say he just... wouldn't miss it for his wife? Like it's a it's a trade off. Like is it me or the wife? Because I no. <laughs> I think me. I know that I don't have the sexual charms of. Peanut Kate, but I've got other things going on here, Beastly. That we'll talk about later. <laughs> I think okay. he has penis. I'm, I'm also <laughs> thankful for air guns and squirrels. I'm thankful for slim consoles because they give you an opportunity for people who don't have them to get a cheaper uh, model. Uh, I'm I'm thankful for everything. I'm thankful for my home, uh, my awesome family. Wilson said it, but I, I'll say that every chance I get, I got five beautiful kids respectful sons in high school getting ready to go to college uh and i'm starting over again with my girls and i got my best friend with me my wife has the same hobbies as me besides she actually is a real power bottom gary uh and we we sit and we spend all our time together and it's just a blessing man life is a blessing i hope everybody out there had a great thanksgiving but it doesn't have to end now always be thankful be thankful for everything that god gives you and and smile every day you can well, after all this emotion, I'm gonna bring the uh, the tone down with a relatively benign and and Makes simple uh, thing that I'm thankful for, and and that's the switch. You know, it's really anticlimactic. <laughs> You're like, I'm thankful for my family, for my friends. Fuck you guys. I'm thankful for the switch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> after the Vita, I never thought I'd find a handheld again that I truly loved. Um, and the switch, switch versus Vita. Oh, they're different things. You can't look at them now. The, the Vita to me is is a again the the Vita's like the girl that wasn't hot in high school that you meet and you know you were always cool to her but no one else was, um, and then you meet her in the future and she's like turned into like some supermodel. Knockout. Is anybody here buying that Gary was the guy who was cool to the ugly duckling in Hell high school? <laughs> No. I from the moment he started no. talking about handhelds, I'm like, it sounds like he's talking about previous relationships. And before I could say that, he went there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean the Vita to me is a a rare beauty. It's that one. Again, it was like she had the self confidence beaten out of her by abusive partners in the past, and then I'm there here capitalizing on that. You know, I've got someone who doesn't realize how special they are, and that to me is the Vita. You know, so I can just be a really shitty owner. I never touch That's it. A hell I never of an use analogy, it. Gary. But yeah, um, but to me, it's it's beautiful. And the Switch is, I think it's it's like the natural evolution of the Vita. It delivers on the promise of the Vita in so many ways. And I'm just, I find myself, you know, I've bought every color Joy-Con. I'm buying like almost every physical game that I think's got a score above seventy on Metacritic. Like I'm ridiculously supporting this because to me, this is like Keep my dream come you. true. Do you, I don't, you know, I don't play traditional home consoles because I feel like they're just like weak PCs. Um, it, and that's kind of what I see them as. Um, the Switch to me is the only thing that stands alone and tries to do something unique that the PC can't do um, and delivers on something that, that I don't have elsewhere. Um, and for that, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that Nintendo are delivering a knockout console this year and hopefully for many more. I'm proud of you, Gary, man. Like the Vita really came in and tore you up, man, left you hanging, and now you're out there playing the field again. I'm, I'm proud of Did you. Did you ever own one of Good. these, Gary? Uh, no, because I don't want arthritis. That was the Game Boy Micro, wasn't it? It's ridiculous. That was like this is, this is so. All you need is two buttons, man, and that D-pad is so fucking money. It's great. That's ridiculous. 
Uh, I wanted to add one more thing I'm thankful for, and that's our bag of dicks sponsorship. Yeah, sponsorship. Is, without a doubt. <laughs> the, I mean, let's be honest here. I mean, we had a lot of offers. Coke, Pepsi, Ford, um, Edible Gamer Onions. Fuel. You know, there were so many to choose from. But we needed a brand that would really step it up. That was to the high bar that the Revolver Live podcast sets. And there was only one when it came down to it, and that was... Bagadix.com. Bag Bagadix.com. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for people that came in late, we are. It's, it's not a gag. We are actually sponsored by Bagadix.com, and we will be pimping the hell out of that um, code that we get, the 20% off code, because we think everyone here needs a bag of dicks. Every time you tweet us a picture of a bag of dicks, you're going to make all four of us collectively stop what we're doing that day yes. and hysterically <laughs> laugh. Um, so like $8 alone so is true. worth it just for that. that. So you know, if, Every tweet I get that has a picture of bag of dicks, perfect. I feel like oh, I've made the internet that one little bit. You know what? Better. And I'm gonna I'm gonna one up you, Briar. Uh huh. I'm gonna add one thing that I'm thankful for, and I think I think I can speak for the the rest of the podcast on this one. Chat, you're awesome. We're thankful for you guys, all the listeners, Absolutely. people who download the podcast, people who tune in live, people who retweet funny stuff at us, and people. Create the memes and all that stuff. We we appreciate you guys. This is you guys are awesome. So we're thankful for you as well. Speaking of chat, they just alerted us that uh, Bungie actually tweeted about five minutes ago about the XP situation. So uh, they Bungie actually said this: the Destiny Two API has yet to be adjusted to reflect the recent in-game change to earned XP. We're working on an API update to address the discrepancy. The correct value to earn an additional level is 160,000 XP, which, from what I understand, is double what it was before. <laughs> Damn. I'm thankful for Bungie. <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect timing. Fucking nailed it. Fucking nailed it. <laughs> Well so, said. I mean, it's a lot of XP. They definitely pulled an EA right there. I mean, they so okay. You want to earn it faster? Well, it's gonna take you take twice as much to to earn anything with it. Wow! But All right, what's our next? Uh... <laughs> I'll have that's, that's, kind of, that's, that's the end of the topics, I believe, Briar. We that got is, a few minutes. Everything we have got a few minutes. Do we want to? Do we want to promote anything else that we're doing in life, in love, in gaming, anything? Uh, what do we want to do? Actually, tomorrow I will be releasing. I, uh, a lot of you guys watched me uh, build a PC uh, on live on Twitch. That took about four hours. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm actually going to be kind of editing a live version of that and uh, kind of showing the steps that I made and also the changes that I've made since uh, the day that I put it together because there's actually been quite a few changes. Because uh, once the PC was built and operating, I kind of wanted to all right make some adjustments here and there. So. I'll, I'll be releasing a video about that tomorrow. That breaks uh, the I'm, YouTube drought, doesn't it, as well? We've not seen you sure active on YouTube yeah. for man, how many weeks? a real son of a bitch, man. Like, it's been hard for me to do YouTube lately. Real hard. Understandable. It's Good to see you back. For you see, you YouTube see how many videos I got, Briar? Kate was looking at it yesterday. She said, you and Briar like, don't do YouTube anymore? I said, I do like two videos a week. And she said, well, Briar did too. He did like one video a week. I was like, well, shit happens, man. You know what it I, is? I will is say. I could come up on Twitch, right? And I can have a blast for an eight hour stream. And I'm talking to people. And I feel, you know, I feel like every day I'm up on Twitch is, you know, a day, a successful day. I can make a YouTube video and half the time it gets demonetized. The other half of the time, it, like, I lose 20 subscribers as soon as I hit the live button. Uh, some of the times it goes live, but like it doesn't send out alerts to any of my subs. It's like I'm just so fucking frustrated with YouTube at this point that like, I'm just losing the the will to stay on there. You know, like mm. maybe it, I still want to do like like I get requests to do like Charter to Keep It or Good Morning Guardians all the time, but when YouTube just spits in my face like constantly believe it or not youtube did it, man youtube youtube came up with um a notice uh i, I want to say two weeks ago uh where they were changing their algorithm and a lot of those videos that i had that got demonetized 
they switched it back over to be, being monetized. So if I were you, I would definitely check and see uh, if some of those videos have gone back over to monetiza monetization. Because uh, I fought almost all of them, Beastly, and eventually they all got turned back. Uh, but, you know, like if you, you know as well as I do, so when you upload a video to YouTube, you got about the first hour is going to be your most profitable hour. The first six mm -hmm. hours are better than the second six hours. The longer they wait to turn that over, you basically just, lost like 99% yeah. of the money you're going to make off of that YouTube video. So it just doesn't, doesn't pay. It doesn't like literally pay to be on mm -hmm. YouTube. <laughs> like it's just not financially a good Sustainable, idea. Sustainable, yeah. I think Bevel's got the right idea with a bag of dicks unboxing. I think that's something that the people need to see. I would like to do that. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. I'll do one. <laughs> dick crates. So the next thing, it's the new dick loot crates. crate. <laughs> Oh, bag of dicks. We got ideas. Big, big ones. We got ideas. You don't know what size. That's the thing. You buy them for ten dollars, but you don't know what yeah. size dick you're going to get in it. Right. That's, it could that's be a little mystery. tiny gummy dick, or it could be a big, huge gummy, gummy dick. Could be an epic dick. Yeah. Or it could be a common dick. <laughs> Maybe rare Uncommon. quality. Yeah, I don't know. That level. Exactly. <laughs> How do you class a dick as rare? What's wow. a legendary dick? What's an exotic dick? The... Uh, ask Beasley. <laughs> 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 It all depends on what, what what part of the world you're in and what part of the world you were born in. What's his exotic no, crate? I had no control over that. I went to Spain or Greece not have an exotic dick. The exotic perk on his dick is just like, will, this weapon will not pull out. That's it. It's just... Reduce handling hey, man, speed. That's, that's, that's a stat. That's a stat. Like a pull fucking out anchor a on it, man. Yeah. Oh, my God. Higher impact, reduce handling speed. That's it. <laughs> this weapon adds one member to the to, to the fire team. No High doubt. caliber rounds, man, on that thing. <laughs> Intrinsic perk, aggressive frame. Just there. <laughs> Jeez, oh quick draw, goodness. man. That's great. <laughs> what about hidden <laughs> hand? <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> Only when she's out of town. Oh, man. Right. Uh, to I think guy. third eye is the only time that perk works in that situation, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> we found a whole new use for third eye. Fantastic. <laughs> Fucking man. Gary, I swear to God. Thank you, bagadicks.com, yeah, for making cool. the end of our show more epic than ever. <laughs> I mean, it was just a match made in heaven. It yes, was bound it was. to happen. Thank you, Gary, Thank you. for making that happen, too. Thank you, Gary. Amazing. You did a lot of hard work, Thank man. you, Bag of Dicks, for answering my incessant emails. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. That's going to wrap this show up. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next week.